Welcome everybody to Shelf Side Spurs Show and a special uh, occasion, isn't it? We've got Stevie Perryman with us. Uh, would you do you mind if we call you Stevie or are you Steve, Mr. Perryman? Steve or Mike Perryman. Perryman. My, Steve my Perryman. 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 The master. The master. My, yeah. mother used to, my mother used to call me Stephen, and that's when I knew I was in for it. <laughs> um, my youngest daughter calls me Stevie because she knows I don't really like it. But, uh, <laughs> now so, you tell me. So, you screwed anyway. up there, didn't you, Johnny? <laughs> So Steve is fine. Hey, Steve is fine, yeah. Um, thanks for joining us tonight, Steve. Um, right. Much appreciated. Um, also, as you, as you can see with Steve tonight, we've got Rez. Say hello, Rez. Good evening, everyone. And Hi, Big Rez. Al, bottom there, bottom corner. Hey, fresh, Freshly Good shaven head as well by looking look at that, Al. That's a bit, bit yeah, tasty there, isn't it? Go. I thought I'd better look tidy for Steve. <laughs> yeah. um, Al's just finished your book today, Steve, he, he said. So he's, he's uh, saving the last 30 or so pages uh to today yeah. so it's all fresh in his memory what do you make of it then now your, your book yeah. review straight off the mark it was yeah thank you very much john cheers <laughs> i'll tell you something it, it's a book you've got to pick if, if you're a spurs man and you you know any of the history you've got to go and get it um i really am being serious here i mean you can you've got your serious bits your real real life bits and you've also got the bits where you can you read it and you're just in tears. You know, there's there's parts in there that I, I tell you, I, I, I was rolling up in laughter, especially with Ozzy. <laughs> so. The good the good thing about me was that I knew what I was, and I knew what I wasn't. So you you've got to understand your own game if you don't understand your own game you you're going to kid yourself you're going to kid people that are paying money to watch you i knew exactly what i could do and what i couldn't do and uh part of that was my upbringing with bill nicholson eddie bailey that era were get on with it brigade you know what they'd been through with rationing and wars and all that stuff so um so hopefully that's come out in the book. I I really don't want to talk myself down in that book, but it's no good me saying I was good enough to play for England a hundred times if I weren't. And for instance, that England situation, I was more than happy to play for my club. Uh, it was a it, it's a great club to play for, and uh, I, actually I was more than happy for an international week if that's what it could be called. The majority of the players were away somewhere else because it made life different than all the other days that are training days. So um, I think it gave me a lift, the fact that they was all off somewhere, travelling somewhere, coming back tired. And I'm I'm refreshed. So, so how yeah. Did, how did Bill Nick treat the international breaks? What did he do when all the players were away? Um. Bill Nick would then just concentrate on you, what you needed to do uh, as an individual. And and Keith the same with Peter Shreves. Um, yeah, it was it was it was the chance to do more solid work on your individual game than you haven't got the team there to do team stuff. So you do individual stuff. And uh, that, that's what I'm saying. It was a it was a a healthy break um from the mundane because because training can get mundane if when you're at it every single day um it gets a bit samey and i actually say to people that that i i don't ever remember driving home from training on a certain day thinking what i've learned today will change my outlook on the game that will that today will help me be a better player from here on in. So it the, the coaching and the leading of it by the Bill Nicks and the Keiths and the Peter Shreves and Eddie Bailey's was sort of drip, 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 drip. So you actually didn't notice the messages that were coming into you, but they were being, you know, they were being formulated into you and therefore you end up the player that you end up. And, and if anything, I was consistent. Now, I'm not saying I was great consistent. That weren't nine out of I ten. Can't be James. No, I, no, okay. I, I worked too hard, really, to have a, a stinker of a game. 
but um but i was consistent and that's because i could work out my own game mm. not many players can actually so the coach's job normally is to work your game out for you i've sat in an office with with players on loan say at exeter or brentford or watford or wherever and you say to the striker that you've just signed how do you score your goals Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah. yeah, you know, maybe one or two come back off the keeper, and uh, you know, I, I, we win a header from a corner, and I touch it in front of the keeper. Anyway, they, they don't really know how to score their goals. So, how are you going to keep scoring goals then? So, you know, do you score from crosses? Do do you score when we're on the break? When you're when you're flying at it. Um, so, so it's very important that you, you have an opinion on your game and it has to be a realistic opinion. And, um, I tell the story in the book, so I'm probably going to bore you with this, but, um, the more and more we stayed in Japan, me and Ozzy, Ozzy left after three years and I carried on, um, that every year they trusted you a bit more and you only ever sign one year contracts and, so in the end, when I'm on my own there, um, I come back from England after like a month off, which was always like January. Mm. Start of February, you report back and then you go into pre-season training, you go for a camp and whatever. This particular season, we signed five new players and four of them were my decision. And one was the clubs. And I think that's very respectful. Because the first year, obviously, we, we we signed late, so they signed all the new players. But after the first year, if we signed five, one or two would be out. Anyway, so the one player they signed for me was a kid that grew up in our area, and he decided not to sign for our club, and he went off to Yokohama, the big city. And um, now his contract had finished, and our club wanted to bring him back, probably because they thought they missed something. I weren't convinced of him. Anyway, uh, eventually, after about three or four games, I get him in the office with a translator. And the Japanese players are car mad. i got to tell you, they are car mad. And I didn't learn it till too late. But if you work in Japan, be it them or me or Aussie, whatever, and you, you drive a Japanese car, you're the biggest tosser on this earth. <laughs> So bearing in mind, my first car, because I had, I took three kids out there, was a seven-seater people carrier. <laughs> so the, what they thought of me, I do not know. <laughs> they drive, they drive ev everything by Japanese. They BMW, Merc, Porsche, the lot. Alfa Romeos, the lot. So anyway, I said to this fella through the translator, Yasu, um, Describe your game to me in terms of a car. Yeah. <laughs> and he wanted a bit more explanation, so I gave it to, through the translator. He said, push. Push. Okay. Um, any particular color? And the week before, we played against a reserve team of another team. And this, the worst player they had turned up in a pink Porsche. <laughs> so I said, I did ask him what colour, and but I jumped in, said, no, leave that to me. I've just seen a pink Porsche, so let's call it a pink Porsche. <laughs> anyway, I, I threw the translator again. I wrote up on the board his words of what a Porsche does. Acceleration, sleek, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we went through it one by one. Are you that? Have you got acceleration? Yeah. I said, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> yeah. So there's about seven crosses against everything that it described. <laughs> so I said, I'm now going to tell you the player that I want you to be. I, I missed out that he's a centre forward. I have particular thoughts about centre forwards. If I, th I call them the engine of the train. Most people talk about the engine of the team being the midfield, but I think it's the front. Because if the front don't move forward, 
the rest can't move. Anyway, so I said, I'm going to describe to you what sort of car I want. I want you to be a Volvo estate. <laughs> 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 and then I described then I described on the board what a Volvo estate does. It gets I hope you didn't put Rumi in the back up there. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I was paying respect that it was not a Japanese car. <laughs> so uh it gets hit, it gets up, it goes again, it does thousands of miles and thousands of miles and thousands, and it keeps going and it keeps working and it keeps pumping. And it's earning its money because it's not great to look at, but it's earning its money. That player eventually scored the winning goal in Yokohama against his old team, which normally happens, doesn't it? He scored the goal that won us the title. Nice. So I think I think that's trying to work out someone's game for him in terms of be realistic. You're not that. Yeah. You are not that. I was never going to be a Glenn Hoddle, not a chance. Um, but I was good at what I did and call that putting your foot in, call that organisation, call it leadership, call it consistency, call it... You know, Keith, Keith Birkinshaw says to me loads of times, Steve, the strength of our team in the early 80s was I had two fullbacks that I knew were going to be fit and play, Chrissy mm -hmm. Uton and yourself were always, always ready to play. And there's something to be said for that. I mean, they're not in that situation now, are they, with fullbacks? No, no. Who's, who's, no, who's, who's no. two fullbacks? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got any, have we? Don't get <laughs> started, my God. Um, but, of course, Tottenham Hotspur is about the Glenn Hoddles and the Aussie Ardealers and the Pat Jennings and, and the, special, the special type. But as I told, I, I got invited onto the pitch uh, for the 50th anniversary of my debut. And Paul Coit said, what are you going to talk about? I said, just leave it to me. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, Bill Nick's passed. God bless his soul. Rest in peace, Bill. And I, I said about the situation where at 21, I went into his office. He's, he's signed me for, uh, he's picked me for three and a half years. And uh, he said, what do you want? I said, my contract's up, Bill. He said, so what do you want? Well, a new contract. Yeah, that's obvious. But what do you want? <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> so, um, well, Bill, I, I, know, um, I know I shouldn't know this, but I room with Gilly. And, and I know Gilly's a great player and he's Scottish international, but he earns 95 quid a week. And I'm earning 28 quid a week. And I think after three and a half years, I've got to be a bit closer to him. So he said, this is your last chance. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all I got out of my mouth was th, th. He stood up. 30 pounds a week. <laughs> we want 30 pounds a week to wear that famous white shirt. <laughs> So, of course, Bill Nick was one of the old-fashioned type that thought you should play Tottenham, pay Tottenham to play for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, oh, and, then he and then he told me two things. He said, how many people do you actually think pay money to watch Steve Perriman play? <laughs> <laughs> so, so bearing in mind, I've been there since I'm 15. I'm now 21. And for six years, they just never say well done to you. They never want <laughs> you to get carried away with yourself. You've got to be humble. Just work hard every day. Don't worry about the money. The money will come. Just keep working hard. So they spent six years keeping you down, and now he wants me to name how many people pay to watch me play. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say this because I wasn't brave enough, but I've had that bollocks kicked out of me, Bill, as per answering that question. <laughs> So, um, and then he hit me with a crunch. This is before video. He said, and by the way, have you ever seen yourself play? <laughs> Bill, do you want an axe to chop my legs off or what? 
Anyway, so on the pitch, on the pitch with Paul Coit, I said, so Bill, if you're listening, Steve Perriman, 21-year-old Steve Perriman didn't have an answer. But the 68-year-old has got an answer for you because I've worked it out, Bill. You can. I know the game is about the Pat Jennings and the specialists and the Aussies and the Glens and the Martin Chivers and the Jimmy Greaves. I know it's, it's, of course, the game is about that special quality. But you cannot pick 11 of those. You've got to pick some of me as the platform for the others to go and do what they do. Exactly. <laughs> Good luck, Bill. Anyway, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's why it's why I've got so much aff affection for the likes of like Stefan Freund and, and people like that because they worked themselves to death on the pitch. They always gave their all. I, I always say the most important thing for a footballer is to work hard. It's not about skill and ability. Yeah, those, those are great and they, they make it exciting. But without yeah. without that foundation, well, it's like it was like um, you know we don't want to necessarily bring up specific players, but. It's why I don't think Ndombele worked for us because he didn't want to work hard. You know, this is why we need work, we need hard workers on a football pitch. Every team does. It does not just Spurs. Every team does. Yeah. Say someone like Ozzy. Ozzy was a special player. Mm. But Ozzy, when we weren't in possession, Ozzy chased the ball around, sometimes to no plan. You couldn't, you couldn't nominate. Stop the play. Where's Ozzy now? <laughs> but he was drawn to the ball because he wanted to get us to win the ball back because he wanted more touches to the ball than anyone so um so it don't mean to say because you've got special ability you don't have to work hard and kick birkinshaw said to me probably two or three times a year since the 81 final do you know our best player in that replay Go on, Glenn Oddle. Glenn Oddle worked the hardest in our team. Well done, Keith. I mean, whether he's right or wrong, Glenn knew how important that game was, that victory was for us, because it led us on to, to the next stage. And I keep saying this, when people say, is it important to win a trophy? I'll tell you why it's important to win a trophy, because when you've won one, you're halfway there to winning the next one. Yeah. If you don't win the first one, trust me, yeah. it gets harder and harder and harder every year. So um, it's a, to make a team is a combination of all these things. And have you got enough height? Have you got enough pace? Have you got enough heart? Have you got enough legs? Have you got enough ability to open them up? Have you got enough this, that, or the other? And it's how you put it all together as a package. And then, of course, you get your two best players injured. So how do you now cope without the Glen? Well, guess what? We have Mickey Hazard. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. In you come, Mick. And, you know, we, we didn't have big squads in those days, did we? The, 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 if we had a big squad, it was made up by homegrown players. And... That was the chance for the homegrown player to show what he's got. I don't, I don't really see that these days. I don't really yeah. see it. And um, I'm a lover of homegrown players. I think homegrown players care more than the player you bring in. Mm. I'm not sure. When I went to left Tottenham and went to Oxford for a year, helped them stay up originally, after the, we stayed up and, and the manager, Morris Evans, a very sort of good man, good, proper football man, he said to me during the sort of break, the pre-season, Steve, I want you to be captain. And I said, no. What? Morris, no. Why not? I said, don't take this the wrong way, but I don't love you. <laughs> And I didn't love him because I couldn't be a Tottenham man and then do the same thing for Oxford. I could play. I could, yeah, I'd do my bit. I'll earn my money. Fine. But to be a captain, you've got to have that bit extra. You've got to have... I knew exactly... I knew exactly how the team, the, the crowd felt. 
I was the I was the in-betweener between the crowd and the team. And sometimes I'd go in and Keith would do the talk or Peter with and all of that. Under Bill Nick, never. I ooh, held back. There's a lot more experience than me in this dressing room. Leave it to them. But but as part of my, if I was asked anything or I ventured up, I'd say, that crowd out there think we're fucking useless. They think we're having them over. They think they've overpaid to watch us because we're not at it. Now, we've got two choices. We're going to have to be booed off the pitch at the end of the game or we're going to have to step up and, and whatever. You can only get that feeling of a crowd when you're homegrown. Mm. You've got to do your, your, your time in the trenches. You know, I, mm. I, I, I went to the club as a 15-year-old and got in as a 17 and a half year old. But well, that was two and a half years watching the first team play at home and listening to the comments of the crowd. Do you what know what education that was, yeah. Education, yeah, 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 that is. Yeah. You know, if you've got any brains about you, you know exactly what they want out of you. Exactly what they want. That was an and, apprenticeship of sorts, wasn't it, Steve? Of, uh, yeah. And God forbid, and God but, forbid you come off that pitch and you ain't left it all out there. God forbid. But even oh, now, yeah. I mean, even nowadays, even our home ground players, they're so much, they're so insulated. <laughs> they're so insulated from from those of us that actually go to games. That's the yeah. that I I hate that about modern football. There's no connection yeah. there. I could, find, have, connection I, could there. Been in, I could have been in the team for about, say about a year. I'm guessing, but say I'm 18, 19, whatever, and for whatever reason, you, you finish training, you've, you've trained at the ground. With Bill Nick, we used to train a lot at the ground in the gymnasium, a lot. Maybe one day a week at Chesant, where other managers wanted you at Chesant every day on grass. And Bill Nick was not like that. He wanted tempo of the gym and one touch and two touch and all that. So you finish and you, you get changed. And then sometimes you drive straight out and want to get home. But other times you'd say, Phil Older was always with me in the car. We would go to uh, Tony's calf or Dole's calf. Right was Dole's calf by the white art there on the corner, like a couple of shops along. Or left was by the Bell and Air was Tony's calf. Mm. And say I go into Tony's calf, you'd be queuing up there for a cup of tea and a cake or whatever. And there'll be our ground staff in there. You know, the ground the people work on the mm. sweeping up and putting things right and all that. These are old time, old school, died in the wall Tottenham people. Live around the corner from the ground. They'd seen the push and run team. They'd seen the double team, whatever. Do you know what I mean? It probably didn't earn the rate for the job because they were working for Tottenham Hotspur. And they'd all be having their lunch or whatever, cup of tea. And one of them would say, Steve, yeah, are you ever going to have a shot? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, then it starts. Then the, you know, well, maybe I thought someone was in a better position than me and whatever. No, but you always think that. Why don't you have a shot down again? Just, just you know, make it as your birthday. Have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and this... And these moments are what endear you to a club. Yeah. Did Phil Holder play much for us, Steve? I can't. I, I don't remember Phil, him too much. Phil played about twelve games, and uh, he, uh, my my best friend in football, Phil. Yes, I've seen uh, the book. A proper man, proper one of twelve or thirteen in his family, and uh, Bill Nick called us all by our surnames: Sunes, Danes, Perryman. Fucking come on, quicker. Uh, Phil, uh, sorry, Chief. Chief. Now he's talking to Phil. Call him Chief. We're on hold. Chief. Chief. <laughs> Your boys okay? Yes, Bill. Yeah, they're fine. Oh, okay, good. Do you know what I mean? We love them. When you think about the youth team that won the FA Youth Cup, Perryman and Suness in the same team, and neither of us were captain. Yeah. Who was captain? Phil Holder. Phil Holder. Yeah. 
chief. Because although <laughs> he was the same age as me, he was a year older than Suness. He was brought up in an environment where he had to fight his corner to get a shirt ironed, to get food before anyone else got there, if you see what I mean. So he was about two years older than us, although we were only like 16, 17. He's about two years older in, in life. Yeah. So um, Phil, unfortunately, only played when I didn't play. So we, we played very few games together. I think we did one game. We played against Man United at home. I think we drew 2-2 and I scored. Um, but uh, so he, he was sort of my standing, if you like. And I, unfortunately enough for me, I weren't injured enough for him to get games. But um, I told the story the other day. So if, if I'm boring you, I'm sorry. But no, no. Uh, Bill owed him some money out of a something that was done wrong in his wages or whatever. And anyway, the more you got on the field in games, especially in the UEFA Cup, meant you had a share or half a share or whatever of, of the overall take, uh, however they worked the bonus out. And um, Phil, uh, Phil Nick said, Chief, Chief, I'll make it up to you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make it up to you. Okay, you know I trust you. All right. Anyway. Final in Feyenoord, UEFA Cup final. Yeah. He put Phil Older on with about five minutes left. <laughs> and, we, and we get a free kick, edge of the box. And Chiv is sticking his chest out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this. Phil pushed him in the chest, went, that's not <laughs> <laughs> And boshed it. And it missed the, the top of the bar by about an inch. And, oh. Uh, that meant Phil got his money. So, but <laughs> 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 you, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying about that, and I'm not going to call it a Tottenham feeling. Let's call it a North London feeling. Yeah. The, the thought that went on about football, it was everyone's life. Mm. Those old time supporters, it was their life. It was their highlight of the week. It was their it dominated their life as per how Tottenham Hotspur did, how they were going, how they were looking. It still does, Steve. I don't think the players witness it. No, no, no they're, they're insulated from it. They're isolated from it. They're, they're in their own bubble. They're in someone their own said, bubble. someone we had on the other day, Steve, said the Brighton team, yeah. they, they make them walk down like a... A road is it to the car park, and they have to sign autographs, and they, so there's still that connection with the fans, and they they love it because they have to walk to but this car park. And yeah, but in contrast, what do you remember when Gareth was on a couple of weeks ago when he was talking about being being down right, in the car yeah. park? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, now now they they go down to the car park into their cars and out. You know, there's whereas even before they were some of them would still you know go through Bill Nicholson and Way. On their way to the stadium and stuff like that it's just it's completely different and i i, I one of one of the people that usually comes on kev um he's been a long time supporter and he can tell that he tells the stories about you know the old white heart lane and a long time uh what it was like before and it was so different i i hanker for those times even though i never experienced them myself you know where where you had a real connection with the club i just don't i don't feel the same yeah. i don't feel I was that close way. You were, kind of, yeah, was, you were, you were. I was close. close. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I was nine years old. I was nine years old when I went to see my first game. Uh, see you play Sheffield United. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very good result in the end. We lost two one, but at 73, 1973 was my first game. Mm. My sister loved you, Stevie. My, see, <laughs> my sister loved you a bit. We, I'll never forget, she went absolutely mad the day you scored that winning goal that sent Chelsea down. <laughs> Mate, I, say, I don't know how I survived because she was throwing all over the place. That was a nice, that was a nice feeling, eh? Oh, that, oh, mate. Can you do it we again now, Steve? That trouble. <laughs> we nearly stood where that trouble was. Do you know, um, the biggest disappointment I've had for a long time is we this year we played Chelsea four times. Mm -hmm. And I don't cool, think, yeah. I do not think that we showed character or football's about more than being a man but if you ain't got enough men in your team and against Chelsea that was shown up yeah, yeah. we did not I, I say it all the time 
I wanted to see one of our players get close to Rudiger and not back off him. Yeah. They pissed all over us. And that's not a good feeling. That is not a good feeling. No, we felt flat leaving that day. The, the, yeah. the second leg in particular. It's just like yeah. we hadn't laid a glove on him, had we? Not a glove. No, oh, no. Not no. a glove. And, you know, we've got a competitive manager and he, he knows how much Chelsea hates Spurs. So you assume that he's winding our players up enough to expect that. It's coming, aren't you? <laughs> They're coming for you. Really, they're coming for you. And it's like it took us by surprise. Um, there's, there is always a physical element to games. I know it's not as sort of openly as physical as it used to be back in the day when, you know, Leeds United are kicking shit. Out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it, you've got to stand up for yourself. And I... I was so disappointed with those Chelsea performances. I can't tell you. And um, you know, I, I went to I went to Terry Naylor's book launch in a pub along the high road there, and um, and a lot of the people were sort of 55, 60, 65 years of age, and you could tell how they stood. They were. And even me, they'd look at me and they wouldn't say hello. They're not gonna, I'm not going to say hello till you fucking say hello to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I nod, I nod, and they, hello, Steve, all right, yeah, great, you're whatever. And one of, one of them said to me, Steve, you was doing it on the field, we was doing it on the terraces. And it, it don't make it right, it don't make it right, but it's sort of... I think the supporters got let down badly on those in those Chelsea games. I I see the Burnley game, for instance, and everyone says they played bad because they lost. I actually thought they had a go against Burnley. Might be wrong as per what you expect out of your team, but I thought they had a go. And um, but then you see something like the Middlesbrough game, and they're back beyond where we were with Chelsea. And you wonder if anyone cares. So I don't know. They went. They seem to play against Borough. They seem to as if they went out there thinking they'd already won it before they kicked the ball. Uh, first half, we moved the ball quite quite well, I thought. But second half, it just completely it dropped off. It turned into a siege. It turned into mm. a siege in that second half. It was all Middlesbrough yeah. for the for the moment, or mostly Middlesbrough. We had a couple of moments, a few moments, but it was like yeah. it was. <sighs> It was awful to watch. You just sort of sat there going, this is going to happen again. And and when Aaron when Rob scored, yeah. it was there was I I didn't I didn't sort of you know where you commiserate yeah. or where you go, oh I just went it was coming. Yeah, it was yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah. And the the as against what I was saying about the Chelsea, Liverpool played Chelsea at Wembley, and I think they ended up putting a young kid on out wide. And something happened, a bit of grief, and the young kid like went up and pushed. Now, if he'd have got himself sent off, that would have been wrong. But that's a young kid doing that for Liverpool, standing up for his team, his teammate. Where did that go? Where? where right. Yeah. I said last week, Steve, I think that's why Sessegnon's playing a bit timid at the moment, because he got that red card in Europe, and now he's too afraid to go into any tackle or do anything yeah. in case he gets sent off again. And he gets the wrath yeah. of the manager and the crowd, so he's not he's, playing with any any confidence because of he's that. Got to, he's got to do a bit for me to convince me about him. Um, I got asked, um, you know, with COVID, a lot of um, a lot of talks were off. I I do probably three or four talks a month. I'm I'm sort of fed up with traveling now. I don't want to really travel long distances and all that. But but you know, once every 10 days, it's all right. So um after like 18 months not doing it, I give a talk, then they have a break, fill their glasses up, then we have questions and answers. And one of the first questions I got asked after 18 months was, who did you think was our, our laziest player last year? Hmm. Okay, so 
your word is lazy not sure i would use the same word but but and and i felt that they wanted me to say deli alley so i wasn't really going to say it i've got certain thoughts about deli alley but but um I think he is what he is, Deli Ali. I don't think he, he, I don't think he professes to be anything different from what he is. There's a, there's a sort of genuineness about him. And yet, and yet, if I was paying money to watch them play, and he tries to flick it through your legs, which he, that's his game, little flick there and the flick there, which when he was on song was happening and working, he looked when it didn't work, as per the last couple of years, didn't look like he was bothered. It didn't look like he had a um, conscience as per giving the ball away. And when I understand the crowd like I understand them, that ain't going to suit. No. That won't suit. You just give it away. You go and get it back. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so I weren't going to give them what the crowd wanted, <laughs> albeit they paid to listen to me. Um, <laughs> so I said, okay. So your word was lazy. Not sure it's my word because if you're not in the dressing room, if you're not in the training, if you're not hearing the instructions that these players are getting, you can never quite hundred percent sort of nail it. But the player who's not playing to his potential, and you use the word lazy, but I'm not necessarily, um, is Dyer. Dyer was a midfield uh international player who decided he wanted to play at the back and I know what it's like in the jungle of a midfield when you've got to like you've got to know 360 degrees around you what's happening because someone's going to nail you somewhere so you can't take your time you've got to play quick and all of that um, so now he's gone at the back it's not quite like that you've got a chance to sort of dictate the pace of the game but he don't really want the ball. He, he's he got freedom, but he don't really want the ball. So when someone gives it to him, because they're in trouble in midfield, they give it back to him, he sort of then is going to be negative and go square or back to the keeper or whatever. So um, I think he's improved under Conte. I definitely think he's improved. Um, I'm talking about his tempo on the ball. Get it, bump, bump, play time he can <laughs> kick a long ball he can deliver one but if he's so good at doing that i want to see him do it three times a half rather than once every six games yeah. so so um i think any team worth their salt are back players that can bring the ball out so that when they pass the ball into midfield it's to our advantage it's not to our disadvantage yeah. and and the other thing I noticed the with that Leeds game was that the two fullbacks that played that day, and you know that one cross for the other one to score. Sassin Young to Sass for Doherty, yeah. That's yes. right. Both those players cannot play standing still. They get trapped on a touchline. So when someone gives them the ball, they can only pay it back. They're not good in that situation. What they both need to do is run forward, mm. run forward and invite the ball over the top of the defender or, or inside the fullback or whatever. And that was starting to come out against Leeds. And then all of a sudden, we sort of gone backwards again, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah. one step forward, one step back. Um, I'm talking too much about the current team. I said I weren't going to, but... I've um, I've heard you talk about bravery before as well, Steve. People that own when they get the ball, they they only get it because there's no other option but for yeah. them to have it, and then they get rid of it straight away. Whereas you want players to be brave and want I want the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball in tight areas, give me the ball, oh. give me the ball. The aim of the game is to take the surprise element out of it. If you if you only get the ball under surprise, yeah, maybe you're surprising yourself because I don't really want it, but it's coming to me. Oh. Take the surprise element out of the game. And the way you do that is you speak for the ball. You want it. Now you're 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 on a positive mode. You can't talk for the ball if you don't want it, can you? No. You must, you must be a mug if you do that. So um, 
Oh, yeah, it's Bill Nick said to me, my first instruction was, Steve, if you play quick, easy and accurate, you'll have a career. And I don't think that message has changed. I, I use it now in my team, Steve. I'm, I say to them in the pitch all the time, if, they, if they're dallying on the ball or taking too many touches, I'm like, quicker, easier, play it quicker, play it easier all the time. If you, something I picked up from yourself. If you think about the, the, the most difficult game in the world, say it's the World Cup final, because that's the highest profile, yeah? To the, I don't know what age you, you deal with, but like an under sevens game. Right, so that that's the difference. So the under sevens game, you you might now and again, although they all chase the ball, I know, but there might be a time where you get the ball and you can look up, and no one's pressing you because they're under sevens or say under tens. Yeah, but if you go to the World Cup final thinking you're going to have that time on the ball, you ain't because this is the cut and thrust of professional football this is the highest level game so if you have a touch i'm telling you you should expect pressure yeah and that's how you train like that to be able to cope with it on that high profile game you know so so a, a, a lot of it is having a look where you can go next etc but one is expecting to be pressured and therefore expecting the tempo from yourself to be able to cope with it and, pop and play. I mean, yeah, I was never thing. a runner with a ball. I was never a dribbler. Of course not. That weren't my game. So it was no good me getting in the first team and saying, oh, I'm going to run with a ball. No, that would have, I'd have been out straight away. So you, you have to, you have to know what your game is and play to it. And yeah. that's why I said, play quick, play easy and play accurate. And, uh, Again, that's someone working out your game for you, isn't it? Very yes. early. Play quick, yes. easy, and accurate. And Bill Nick had all these sayings that made the framework of the team. Uh, so you, you were all playing to a framework, although Jimmy Greaves is at the front and he can do things that I could not dream of doing. <laughs> and Steve Perriman's in midfield and... Joking is at right back and Cyril's at left back and Cyril could bomb on and cross with his left foot like a left winger, etc. And it's how you, I come back to the same thing. It's how you put it all together, mm. those those abilities. And um, nowadays they'd call it a, a culture or a philosophy, wouldn't they? But that's exactly what he was instilling on the whole club, wasn't it? This is how you're going to play. This is how you're going to train. Every, the way you train is going to be taken into the game. Yeah. And Bill, Bill Nicholson had hand-picked staff and I'm not saying everything Bill did was great because it, it wasn't. But within the within the confines of what he had mm. in terms of budgets, etc. I mean, did we have the word budget in those days? I don't think so. But, but within the confines that there obviously is, but no one highlights it, he he's got to get the best out of you. And and it was all these little sayings that just like I come back to the thing, drip, drip, drip. Trip, trip. Ball goes dead, you come alive. What a great saying that is. Ball goes out of play, you go, oh, well, uh, well oh, look at that that plane. I wonder where that plane's going. You switch on, not switch off. Yeah. You're going to get done. At the yeah. top level, you're going to get done. And I, I always use the example, um, Liverpool against Barcelona, semi-final, when they got to the final and played Spurs. The winning goal was a quick corner, quick corner. Kick and four players, Barcelona players, had their back to the ball. Mm. And that's when at the very top goes, level, isn't it? When the ball goes dead, come alive. Come alive, yeah. And I, I hate seeing people turn their back on the ball. And he, even if they know that their man they've got a mark is over there and the corner's there, I would run backwards to go and pick him up. I'd run backwards and I'd do it bloody sharp as well. <laughs> Because if it gets knocked in early, I'm gonna get. That's gonna be my fault. So, um, but lots, lots of those things from Bill Nick was. I've um, yeah, I've heard you talking about them, Steve, um, on other podcasts and stuff. So I, I, I googled it one once, like um, 
Bill Nicholson philosophy or the Tottenham way philosophy, mm-hmm. and there wasn't much out there. So I started keeping a list every time you sort of mentioned them in podcasts and yeah. and your guest appearance. And I've got a little list. I don't know if you got it. Um, I sent it to Alan to, to send on to you. So I've got a whole list of Brilliant. sounds that, which you've revealed from Bill Nicholson that Brilliant. he picked up over the years. Yeah, I'd so love, I'm still I'd using love them. To see them because yeah. I just talk about it and it's yeah. at the top of my head and I sometimes forget mm. one or two or whatever. Yeah, whenever you whenever you say one, I'm right, right, that's going on the list. So I've got a list of them all, yeah. It's wicked. Brilliant. Yeah. And and I, I've been asked a few people, now I've moved to Wiltshire, for instance, and they tell me they're gonna start up an under tens team or whatever, you know, and, and I'm sure they want me to go and help them take the training. I've yeah. I've never took ten year olds in my life. Do you know what I mean? So I think that must be the most difficult job in the world. But, you know, I'm saying the most important thing you've got to do is, from the off, have a meeting with the parents and the kids and just just ask them to describe what sort of team do you want to be. Yeah. And off the back of that tells you your ethics and your morals and your integrity that this team is going to play with. If you think I'm going to pick, for instance, if you're the manager, if you think I'm going to pick the best 11 every week, so four or five kids are going to stand shivering on the touchline and never get a game, well, that's not doing them any good. So before the off, if you say, listen, I'm not always going to pick what I think maybe is the best team because I'm going to give everyone a game. And when we're 10 years old, as much as we'd like to win, it's not the be all and end all of it. I don't want a team that's going to play win at all costs. And parents, if you want to, if you want your your son to play in a team that's win at all costs, i.e., cheating and disrespecting the referee and time wasting and whatever, you're in the wrong team. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? If we can't teach kids integrity of football at that young age, when are we going to teach them it? Yeah, so. Mm. Yeah. We had we had a referee once, Steve, who could come from youth football, and we said to him, "Oh, I bet it's a relief, isn't it, for you to to uh, to get away from the kids?" The way he said, no, "Good, you've no idea." He said, "It's much worse refereeing the kids' game because you've got the parents. Like you got if it's six aside, you've got twelve, you know, parents yeah. going Absolutely. at you the whole game." He said, "I'd much rather do adult football. Kids is a nightmare these days. Yeah, like, everyone's got an opinion on the sideline, shouting at you. Every decision you make, you've got twelve parents." Shouting at you, so you said it was a nice relief to to uh, referee adults football. To I get don't away doubt from it. that. I yeah. really don't doubt that. So there has to be, um, there has to be a decision made before a ball is kicked about what sort of team we're going to be. <coughs> we want to win, of course. We want to win, but we want to win fair. We want to win with you all enjoying the game. I don't want to start telling you to kick the ball away when you've given a, f- a free kick away because there's only a minute left. No, you, you, okay, you don't go and get the ball for them. That's gone too strong. But you get back to the to to defend your goal, which is what football's about. You defend your goal and you attack their goal. So. Um, these people want to teach all the other nonsense other than defend properly and attack properly by using some other method of game management, this bullshit game management. <laughs> why don't why don't the why don't the so-called experts, pundits on television highlight when game management don't work? I'm at a loss. I do not understand why they do not highlight when game management doesn't work they start they start to even say to managers like the brighton manager who i think is a good man a good football person danny whatever his name is used to play for spurs and liverpool and whatever start saying this man's got to learn about game management <laughs> danny do you know how many titles he's won before he came to this country yeah, you don't Danny. think he's been through the game management run and decided it don't work. Yeah. Your team starts off in fifth gear, get a goal, go back to third. Yeah. All of a sudden, level 1-1. One, one. Oh, you, I want you to go back to fifth gear now. Don't happen. 
Funnily yeah. enough, he was doing the co-commentary on the Middlesbrough game, Steve, and, and he, was was, he? he kept saying about he should be doing this, he should be making this substitution, he should be changing to this formation. I thought, who are you to be telling Antonio Conte? <laughs> you haven't really managed the team before, and he's trying to ever. tell everyone, yeah, ever, and he's trying to tell Antonio Conte he should be doing this, he should be yeah. doing that, he should be making a sub earlier, he should be changing formation. I oh, think that, that Danny, what's his second name? Danny Murphy. Danny, Danny Murphy. Murphy. Danny Danny Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. You might have heard this before. He comes, uh, the Chelsea manager, about his third game in, uh, match of the day, at night, and he had put a player on and then took him off 20 minutes later. So the after-match interview, quite rightly says, why did you put Hudson-Odoi on and then take him off? He said, very Germanic-like, he said, didn't like his body language, didn't like this, didn't like that. But not nasty, not angry, whatever. They go back to the studio. Three non-managers say, yeah. oh, can't manage like that. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, you're telling this top-class manager that you can't manage like that. Go on, then. Tell me what you should do or why you can't manage like that. You know what the reason was? Three non-managers, Shearer, Lineker, and the Danny fella. Yeah. yeah. You know what their reasoning was? What would the other players be thinking? Yeah. I'll tell you what I'd have been thinking. I'd have been thinking, that could have been me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd better work hard next time, or I'm going to be, get that, hold off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. It would have been me. So, yeah. So, yeah. He's got a history for it. Um, so, Steve, um, we, we got you on tonight to sort of take you back a few few years to the start of your Spurs career so we've got a few yeah. questions um about yeah. the beginning taking you through through the years so we'll start with uh one of the first questions I've got here um um who scouted and signed you for Spurs and did you know they were watching you um do you remember any particular game when you knew they were watching you and you thought I played well there uh sure so no to the second part right um the it's, it's quite a long story this but I was I represented my district team at junior school level a year before I was supposed to. So I'm, I must have been a good player at school. Absolutely. Right. I then go to a grammar school and we drop out completely of the football scene and we don't even play competitive football matches. So I'm nowhere near the district team. I'm nowhere near a trial. I'm nowhere near anyone watching me. The only football I'm getting is probably a house game. And if a boy don't turn up, we're probably playing nine against eight <laughs> on a full pitch. Anyway, yeah. so we had a change of sports master. He put us all in for the district trials. And six of us got in the Ealing district team. My first game for Ealing district was against Harrow at Salvatorian College. And um, apparently Charlie Faulkner the chief scout of Tottenham, just into the job in the summer. Um, this would have been September time, I suppose, having gone back to school. And um, he knocked, instead of going to a professional game in the afternoon, he came knocking on my door. He found out where I lived and, um, and encouraged me to sign the schoolboy film to be able to go training at Spurs. My oldest brother, so I'm under 15, so my brother's, 19 ted my oldest brother he said no no mr faulkner no he's not going to sign that form no no he's got to sign the form to come training with us no mr faulkner you don't have to sign that form <laughs> anyway so because i didn't sign the form and i ended up going from ealing middlesex london england schoolboys imagine from nowhere <laughs> not going for england schoolboys i could have joined about 35 different clubs and uh, but I managed to sign for Tottenham because of Bill Nicholson, and you can ask questions about that why. But but Bill Nick Bill Nicholson made the difference, and and um, so I didn't know Charlie was even at the game. I didn't even think about people watching me, but they obviously were to show an interest after and invite me for training. And because I didn't sign that form for Spurs. I was allowed to go training at the Arsenal and Chelsea and different West Ham and different clubs. So, um, but ironically, I was sort of stayed loyal to Tottenham. 
and they were the first club to knock on my door after that Harrow game. It was fate. Then, it was fate, absolutely. Yeah. And and the reason why I signed for Bill Nicholson was because when he came around my house and all these people that were coming probably six or seven in the night, starting about 7.30, going on to about 9.30, <laughs> um, going through the various rooms till they get to the, you know, in our day, we had the best room. That the only room in the Sunday, <laughs> well, that's the room we used to talk to the managers. So the Bill, parlor. <laughs> Bill Nicholson, Ron Greenwood, um, Tommy Dock, Malcolm Allison, Joe Mercer, etc. <laughs> and... Um, and he was no flannel. He was straight to the point. He was no spin. He was no kidology. He was no mind games. He just said it like it needed saying. And that appealed to me. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't have appealed to everyone, but it appealed to me. And um, that's the best decision I made in my life. Can you imagine if that house master hadn't taken over at your school and sent you to those trials? It, what life like closing doors moment, isn't it? Sliding doors. Well, you know what? I would have stayed on instead of leaving at the end of my fifth year, uh, me at me under fifteen year at school, which actually sent the school absolutely berserk. <laughs> they said I wasted a place, someone's place at a grammar school, and all this, all that. They were going to ban me from being um, registered to play in the league. So oh, I could like, they couldn't stop me leaving, but they could stop me being registered in the southeast counties, for instance. Yeah. So imagine, imagine only being out playing friendlies. Try a week and then play a friendly if we have one. And there's no friendly because you play leagues. So that was such a such a, a bad moment. Anyway, um, yes. Playing for someone like Hayes, no. Illinden Borough, and might have got spotted that way. Players do, don't they? Yeah. Peter yeah. Osgood didn't sign for Chelsea till he was 19. Um, and you'd have, missed, so, you'd have missed those two years that you said were so important, sat around the stadium listening to the crowd and, and watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're at your education as Spurs man, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. So, but just for instance, if I'd have gone to West Ham, remember this is 1967. Spurs were about to beat Chelsea in the uh, in the FA Cup final. Cockney Cup final. Bill Nick said to me in the car park when I'm training one of the nights I actually went to Tottenham to train. Bill Nick turned the corner and he's walking towards me and I thought, oh, Christ. Put me head down. <laughs> he said, Steve, are you going to sign for us or not? <laughs> He said, because if you don't, you're not getting a cup final ticket. (laughs) (laughs) But now. This is what I mean about street talking. Tommy Duffy around my house, he was going to take me, my dad, my two brothers, my mum, although she didn't want to go, pick us up in a car. I was going to get dropped off at the team hotel. I was going to eat the pre-match meal with the team. I was going to be on the bus going to Wembley. I was going to be in the dressing room with them before and after the game. And then after the game, we were going to go to a hotel to celebrate the victory. No mention of one ticket, not getting it. (laughs) 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 And and that's the difference between Bill Nick and other people. He That appealed to you. That appealed to me. Yeah. Yeah. And... um, and I'm pleased that it did appeal to me because yeah. so I'm are not... we, Steve. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. But for instance, if I'd have gone to um if I'd have gone to West Ham, so remember 67, 66 World Cup, mm. Hurst oh, and Peters. Yeah. So my brother said to me, Steve, they know how to produce a player. Tottenham don't produce players. Yeah. But my journey from Northolt to Tottenham was two hours there and two hours back. Change here, change there, get a bus, get this, get that, whatever. Uh, so I left at seven and I could guarantee to be there for nine o'clock, yeah? 
when the bus left for Chesney. Um, if I'd have gone to West Ham, it would have been two hours 20. Two hours 20 there, two hours 20 back. I said, Ted, I can't deal with that. I, could... <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal with that. But actually, I wanted to go to Spurs because of your nick. So, so um, there was method in my madness. I was never going to stay in digs anywhere. I'm not that digs type of person. Um, and um, to be fair, and, I wouldn't want to travel 20 minutes to get to West Ham either. In later <laughs> years, in later years, Keith Birkinshaw, in his own Yorkshire straight talking way, said, I think it's about time you moved over this way, Steve. <laughs> I said, yeah, is that right? Why is that then? He said, Well, I think you're doing too much driving. I said, on the day that Bill Nicholson signed me, Keith, he promised me I could live wherever I wanted to live. Are you changing that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. I love it. Um, our, our next question is, Steve, um, when you first arrived at Spurs as a youth apprentice, when you first walked in the door, pretty much, were you starstruck by any players and, or who were you most sort of taken with and you thought, that's... A player. That's a player. So you walk into Tottenham training ground, Chesant, and you're there. Ah, oh, this this was a nightmare. <laughs> you sign for a club and you're an England schoolboy. All the players that you're joining, apprentice level, all think you're flash. They all think you think you're going to make it. <laughs> they all think that you've got money to sign. Etc. You are you are the blue eyed boy, and you're going to be fucking Billy Mr. Big Pollocks, yeah. Billy yeah. Pollocks. Yeah. <laughs> so you got all that to cope with. Oh Christ! Charlie Faulkner, the scout, lived in Hillingdon, which is only like ten minutes away from where I lived in Northolt. Bearing in mind we both were going to work for Tottenham, so he said, "Steve, I can pick you up certain days and take you." Well, get in there on time. Weren't as important to Charlie as it was to me. Because I don't, I want to be under the radar. I don't want to step out of line. I don't want to be special. I don't want to be anything. <laughs> so, uh, Charlie Faulkner did not tell me, bearing in mind I just left school, that the apprentices start back a week before the pros. Oh. He told me about the pro starting day. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so no. Billy Big Bollocks came no, no, in a week late. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so not that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, there's, there's worse to come with that. As per your question, they just won the FA Cup. The FA Cup was something to win. Mm. When you got names like. Jimmy Greaves, Dave Mackay. Oh, my God, Dave Mackay. Leading, walking about with his chest out, looking at you like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> not saying it, not saying it, bless him. But Gilly, shuffling along, smiling, lovely. Big Mike Ingram, Pat Jennings, Cyril Knowles. You could not be drawn to one person because there was quality all around you. The training ground was quality. Everything was quality. But I'm as worried to fuck that I'm being shown to be special. I don't want to be special. I want to be under the radar. I don't want no one to notice me unless it's on the football field. Then they can say, hmm, he ain't bad, you know or he has a go, or whatever they want to say about me. After a certain amount of time, we're now training at the season started. I'm now training at the ground. On a Friday, we trained at the ground. Well, most days we trained at the ground. But Fridays, we did sprints. Did a couple of laps warm up, and we did sprints, because that's going to prepare us to play the next day. As apprentices, after that, we had jobs to do. And then get them done as quick as we can and we can get home and have a sort of rest, hopefully, before the game the next day. And being in the juniors or youth team, you'd have been kicking off at 11 o'clock. 
thankfully at a weekend my brother would take me in his car to to the game bill nick on this particular morning walks over to us as a group of apprentices and he says steve have you got a suit yeah go on put it on meet us at king's cross station you're going to go with the first team only to push the skips. The other players, these young players, didn't hear you're only pushing the skips. They didn't hear that. They just <laughs> said, you're going with the first team. I trained up to Newcastle. My life was hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I did it for the right reason, because Cecil was not well. And, oh, the other thing he did, the other thing he did was, calls me into his... Changing room. This is in pre-season. This is before many balls have been kicked and I can prove myself or otherwise. He said, we've got a kid, uh, we've got a game, pre-season game against Celtic. And um, the cameras are going to come here and they're going to interview our players about this pre-season game. A apparently there was 100,000 people at this pre-season game. So it's quite an important game, sort of. Cup winners from from England against, I think Celtic might have been European champions. Anyway, you can imagine the, the hype around this game. So he said, but while the cameras are here, they're going to make a, a programme for kids TV about a football apprentice. And I've told them that you're going to do it. No. <laughs> Stitched up again. No. What? No. I said, Bill, I've only just joined. I, I don't know the life of an apprentice, do I? Well, I've said you're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because I was called out, because I was called out of the dressing room to go and see the manager. That's enough in itself. <laughs> Manager, don't speak to apprentice professionals. Yeah. Right? So when I get back there, I've now got about 30 seconds to work out. When they say, what did he want? <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to work out my answer that's not going to put me under any more pressure. And I cannot tell them I'm going to be on a kids' program. <laughs> <laughs> about the life of an apprentice professional I've fucking been there 10 days <laughs> so, so oh dear. I, walk in, I walk in someone says what did he want <laughs> yeah it was something about a form I didn't sign a form or something like that. <laughs> but now I'm lying now I'm lying <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah. How I dealt with that first six months was just <laughs> character building. <laughs> if, there's a way, if there's a way to make you feel at home, that was not it. <laughs> that did really they, was not it. And did you're they wrong. Come, did they come out with a nickname for you? Not that I knew. Not that you know of, yeah. <laughs> but eventually, you know what happens? You get to training and you get working with a ball and you get competing, and you play pre-season games, and then all of a sudden you're into a season, and then they know if you can play or not. Yeah. And once they believe you can play, you're all right. They, they, they say they, you can tell, don't they, after one session whether someone's a player or not. Do but you that's agree with that? Pass. That's your pass through. Yeah. Forget yeah. all the, the other crap. That's your pass through. He's all right. And off you go. And then you... And um, so Charlie Faulkner... Um, the place as a whole was the star. Yeah. If I had to pick out one, I would say Jimmy Greaves because it's Jimmy Greaves, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Dave Mackay because of his presence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here. I'm Dave Mackay. No, yeah. you said it. You didn't have to say it. Awesome. So, awesome. Brilliant. Um, Next question. How did you find out you'd been picked for the for your first team debut? So I went with the team the week before to Derby County. I was 13th man. 
there was the 11 selected and then one sub i was 13th man so i wasn't i wasn't uh, taking part but i was there i was witnessing it that was the first time tottenham hotspur played against dave mckay i've been released him dave's now captain of derby county they beat us oh, five nil and I was witness to Bill Nick's attitude to the team, to the meeting after, to the meeting on Monday, etc. And uh, I went with a reserve team either on the Tuesday or Wednesday to Reading. Extremely disappointed that I weren't playing for the reserves. I didn't play on the Saturday because I was with the first team. Now I'm not playing for the reserves. I'm thinking... Just won a game. Yeah. Well, mm. anyway, that was to save me for Saturday because he knew that he was going to pick me and, and he, he made changes and he picked me and Dennis Bond in the same team. But he announced to us both on Friday that one of us was definitely playing, possibly two. So that was to take a bit of pressure yeah, off. Yeah, on and, your um, So my brother disagreed with me this the other day, but my brother said he drove me to the game and I knew that I was playing. That took me by surprise because I didn't think I knew that I was playing. But uh, maybe maybe Charlie Faulkner phoned my parents in the morning of the game and said, just to let you know, Steve's playing. I mean, that was a big feather in Charlie's cap having signed me. That this 17-year-old is now yeah. in the first. So I expect he did it out of sort of joy or whatever. That's the only thing I can think of, of how I would have known that I was playing. And thank God... At 17, I'm naive, Steve. Because if I'd have known how important that game was to your career, I think I would have... Some sort of inertia would have taken over my body and I wouldn't have been able to put one leg in front of the other. Because this is, this is serious business. You're playing in front of 40,000 people. The team is starting to foul. And, um, and I'm being brought in. And that, this is probably me looking back on it. This weren't me thinking at the time. But the team was a great team of fantastic players. But they were running out of legs. And I was bought... The two, there was too many Chiefs and not enough Indians. And I was brought in as an Indian to run around and win the ball and give it to someone who could play. <laughs> so, anyway, when I went in my first tackle, um, the crowd reacted to me like I'd scored a goal. And you know what the crowd are saying by that reaction? We like that. Keep doing it. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. So, <laughs> I'm putting my foot in and I'm putting my foot in again. Anyway, whatever I did would seem to be okay. And um, we lost one nil. Mike England own, own goal. Great headed goal. Own goal, actually. But um, but it meant that I got good reviews and, and all the stuff and people spoke nice about me. And therefore, I, th I then actually stayed in the team. And I didn't go out until we got beat in the, in the third round replay of the Cup against um, Crystal Palace. And Bill Nick left out six players. But he made the point that I was not being dropped. I was being rested because of the, the sort of, the, the difference of, of stepping up as a 17 year old and playing game after game after game so he, he sort of took the, the heat off me I, I wasn't dropped apparently so um but then I was soon back in again and uh it sort of flowed from there but um but yeah I I I I, I really really trust in being naive because you would worry yourself sick mm. if you if you knew how important that game was going to be for the reaction of the crowd to you. I, I don't think they're going to dislike you as a 17 year old, but yeah. All right. Not, not sure about him. Whatever. That, that was very clever. The way he did it saying that to two of you, one of you is going to play. Cause then you think it gets you excited. Cause you want to be that one rather than thinking if you, if you told both of you, you're going to play the, the nerves. You worry and, about yeah, the fact that you're playing. About, yeah. That you, you're thinking, oh, it could be the other guy. I want to be the one that's playing. One of the reasons why I had a long career 
and this is not me just being nice. One of the reasons I had a long career was because I never really rated myself. Now you could say I'll leave off Steve. 800 and whatever games, Christ. Yeah. But I actually, so so when he said me and Dennis, my first thought was, oh, it's going to be Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. But by being that, not really fancying yourself, remember there's no agents then, there's no, mm. Bill Nick is trying, Bill Nick and Eddie Bailey would never, I mean never, say well done. Never. If Bill Nick didn't talk to you after the end of a game, that meant you played well. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you how I got told I was going on that first trip I mentioned to you to America? Go on. I played for the A-team early evening, so no lights at Chesant. So early evening, say in early May, I suppose. Um, we normally won by three or four goals playing at home because a good pitch and we pass around teams. You play Critter Athletic or... Wellingborough town or these teams in the uh, the Metropolitan League away from home it was Christ it was game on battle at home we could pass around them um came off with one walk into the corner where where you walk to get to the clubhouse there Eddie Bailey stood on the bank having watched the game he said Perryman come here walk over to him he said, someone tells me that in that dressing room there where you're going, there's a list up on the board of players who might be going to America and Canada. <laughs> and your fucking name is on the list. <laughs> Did you write it on? <laughs> you wrote you wrote your name on that list. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I ain't seen it. Well, I suggest when you walk in there, you go and look and read it and just take note of what it says because you might have to bring your passport in. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> you're you're going you're gonna to have to bring your passport in or something. Mate, maybe still not going. You, you've never even played in the reserves, by the way. So how can you take with the first thing? <laughs> they just couldn't say you've had a good season. The manager wants to have a look at you. Well done, son. Keep it going. You ain't made it. That's obvious. You ain't made it yet. But uh, they just kept you on your toes. Yeah, grounded. They just grounded say toes, well done. Do you um, remember pulling on the Spurs shirt for the first team, even as a youth team or in the first team? Like the first time you put the shirt on, do you remember? Uh, yeah, no, no. Um, I suppose this is not blasé, but I suppose I got to the England schoolboys team um, ever before I played for Spurs, um, played in front of 100,000 kids, screaming kids. So, yeah, do you know what? Um, Just another day for Stevie Perriman. I, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I, I, I was not a die-in-the-wall Spurs man because I'm from West London. I used yeah. to watch QPR and Brentford, old third division. And so... I, th I think it took me about 10 minutes to become, when I walked in, bearing in mind I had these worries about, oh, I'm going to get some grief today. <laughs> anyway, but if I, could, if I could get rid of that, I just felt the football vibe around North London, White Hart Lane, Tottenham High Road. I felt the vibe and... Um, that was it. I was. I was that was a bit of you. Yeah. I was convinced. Um, do you remember that, in, in some ways, in some ways, I don't think it's a bad thing to live away from the club where you're earning your money um, or earning your living. Um, you could sort of detach yourself from it, mm. and then you come back in, and then you out again. Um, yeah. And um, that's not me. Again, I didn't live anywhere special. I lived in a council house in Norfolk. Um, but it seemed like a, a fresher area than Tottenham North 17 OAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear. Um, who Things haven't changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who did you used to room with on away trips? Was there a regular sort of roommate? or Ended up um, with Gilly uh, in my young days. And um, 
I don't think I roomed with Gilly the first time, but uh, I must have roomed with with someone when I was 15 at Newcastle away. Um, but again, can't remember who. Um, I do remember being on the table and a waitress bringing an autograph book round and then <laughs> passed it to me. <laughs> and I thought, oh, she don't want me. I passed it on. <laughs> and Pat said, hey, love, get him. Get him. He's a player. Awesome. Stephen S T E P H E N, and uh, yeah, so so Gilly and uh, Gilly was a particular character. Um, loved Gilly, I just loved him. I could write a book about Gilly. I could write another book about his stories about Dave Mackay. Um, Gilly lived the life. He trained. He was probably one of the best trainers, but he probably lived the best life off the field as well. So it, mm. it sort of one followed the other. Yeah. Um, such a such a good man, such a humble man. And uh, so we go to a meeting one day about eleven o'clock. You've had breakfast. You next time you get, when you were the first team, all you did was eat. <laughs> You know, I've never seen food like it. And uh, so you have a pre match, you have a breakfast, then you have a pre match meal in a hotel. And uh, Bill Nick starts the meeting off about 11 o'clock. We're having a pre match meal about 12 o'clock. We've eaten at nine o'clock. <laughs> and um, he said, uh, The manager of the hotel just wants to apologize because apparently last night there was a lot of. Um, noise on the third floor which is where all you lot were so you <laughs> apologize if someone's sleep was interrupted last night was anyone <clears throat> i'm sat next to gilly and gilly said hey bill me me and stevie did you say three o'clock bill three o'clock in the morning he said yes gilly he said yeah two dolly birds bang 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 on our door Bill, three o'clock in the morning, bang, bang, bang on the door to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am dying of death. I am dying of death in case Bill Nick thinks he's serious. <laughs> so, um, so, um, in with with the eighties team, I sort of in the end room uh, up with uh, Ozzy, awesome, um, uh, which was great. Uh, Ozzy was great. Um, we we had a we had a link in some way, and our, our friend there, Alan, um, described the the bit in the book about me and Ozzy. It was no surprise we linked up again under Sugar, and then in Japan. Um, I I had experience with dealing with a lot of Norwegians and Swedes in my time as a player at Tottenham, so I, I sort of could read our foreigner. I, I'm sure they're different types of people, but anyway, I could I could work around what they were saying, but what they were trying to say, and I think Aussie appreciated that, and um, and we talked about everything everything and uh I, I learned a lot from Ozzy about life because Ozzy's not just a footballer he's apparently could have been a lawyer um, right. but hmm. about politics and and stuff that I would have never ever come across um again I I speaking before this started you know I don't really read books and um there's reasons for that but um I have I've wrote more I've written more books than <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that 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 is the best time of your life on a Friday night when you've had your food and you've gone to bed and you're watching telly before you go to sleep yeah. and you talk and you talk about your families and you talk about this and you talk about that and and how the team's doing and what we think we can do better and all that it's it's the it's the time when you really communicated with someone because most of it was sort of superficial. It was sort of hello and how are you and gone, bosh, you go home, they go home. And uh, 
because I live far away, I didn't really socialise with with players. Um, but that Friday night was was a was a good time, and um, sometimes we probably spoke too long into the night, but uh, which is not good for you either. But yeah. but um, yeah, so Friday night seminars with Ozzy, good, good friend, yeah, um, and still is still yeah. a good friend. We had we were together three years in Japan. We we had the worst eighteen months in our lives with Sugar. We just it was not the club that we signed for. And lots of reasons for that. Lots of nonsense went on that I don't really want to get into. But it was when you get shown the door, I'm not sure Ozzy feels like this because he was the manager. When you get shown the door, I have never been so relieved in my life because it was not a place where I wanted to be under, under the the stewardship of someone like him. No, this, this, this was so far detached from the Bill Nick way. Mm. I said to Sugar one day, you think you're tough. You think you're hard. Bill Nick was about 3000 times harder than you. And that's what, I've come, and that's what I've, yeah. And that's what I've come up through. So if you think you're worrying me by giving me a so-called bollocking, you're not. So, um, but the three years we had together in Japan was officially the best three years of my life. We were respected. All the opposite things from working for Sugar to going to Japan, there to there. We were respected. We were listened to. We were, because we were successful, we were lauded. We were, we, you know, when Leicester won the league, and how big a surprise it was. When our team won the league, it was a bigger feat than that because we had wow. the least least powerful team in the league because we were owned by not the big Hitachis, Yamaha, yeah, yeah. Toyotas. We were owned by the community. Our community had the license for our club. And therefore, if we spent a pound note, okay, yen, 100 yen or whatever it's called, um, you had to get double the value back for it. And uh, we took that on board and, and we worked the players and we had all the success with that team, that club. They've never won anything since. Um, we had all the success there that we should have had at Tottenham. And had we been dealt with properly at Tottenham, that's what we would have done. There is no doubt in my mind. Absolutely no doubt. Aussie's never worked in England since. Yeah. Which I find he is one of the most incredible football brains I've ever dealt with. And to toss him away like they did was a scandal. A scandal. I'm not bad. Trust me, I'm not bad. <laughs> On the development side and the leadership side and all that and call it tactics, whatever you want. To actually toss us away was a crime. Of course, I'm, you'd say that. of course I'm going to say that because I I like what we were and the heart that we had for the club. And it's it's not all about heart. It's about brains and, and ability, but it's also backing of the people above you and it's respect. And... Um, that was an exciting team, though, Steve, wasn't it? In a way, they've kind of um, that Aussie team has set the tone for everything that's come afterwards. When we all say about fun. going back to the Tottenham way and playing beautiful football, all us lot can remember the Aussie team going forward. You know, so yeah. it's kind of uh, set a standard that other people have struggled to to live up to ever since, and, and it's an attacking sense. Yeah, um, I mean, there was obviously defensive weaknesses, and when I've gone and talked, done talks with Aussie it comes up about the defence and listen to this, how Ozzy deals with it. He says, one day, say we have 22 players. I say to Stevie, 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 I take, I take the, the attackers and you take the defenders. So you 20, come with me. <laughs> 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 you, were you were drilling that one player to, uh, <laughs> and they were both goalies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, exciting 
I'm telling you, I have never been in a dressing room hearing more brains, more sense, more football than I have from Ozzy Ardellas. He is that, he, he that, that special. Well. He had that on the pitch as well, didn't he? I mean, I, I never had the privilege. I never had the privilege of, of watching him play or, or yourself play, Steve, to be honest. But sure. from from what I've read, from what I've seen in the sort of clips that are available, the 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 footballing brain uh, with, within within Aussie's uh, body was a cut Aussie, above anything else around him. It was, was phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. Used to show them the ball, didn't he, Steve? And then nip it away at the last minute yeah. deliberately, yeah. just show them the ball, and then they think they'd get it, and then they commit themselves, and then he was gone and passed them. Everyone, everyone's got a special thing they do, and and Aussie's special thing was they'd be running with the ball on the bad pitches, by the way. He'd be mm. running with the ball, and an opponent would come from the side, and he'd almost slow down and then nip across his line. <laughs> and the only way he could be stopped was fouled. And he just, almost like Jimmy Greaves, waited for a defender to then nip inside him to, to then be able to beat the goalkeeper. But um, ev everyone's got their own little... I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this. I said to Ricky one day, tell me about you playing growing up with a ball. Well, I, I live on the farm and, uh, yeah... He said, I didn't play 11 v 11 until I was 13 because not enough boys at the school. Blimey. He said, so at home, I just, on the farm, I used to run in and out the trees with the ball. In and out, in and out, in and out, round the thing and back yeah. in. And then I went to the older school and I had to ride a horse to the school. I'm thinking, where do you leave the horse? <laughs> <laughs> In the horse park. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, exactly. So so he said, at 13 years of age, I get introduced to 11 v 11 football. Remember, all I've done is run in and out the trees yeah. and back and run in and out the trees. And I'm playing in the 11 v 11 and I'm running with the ball. And the, the teacher is screaming, Ricky, Ricky, <laughs> pass, pass the ball. And I'm thinking, what the fuck's this pass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't pass. I don't pass the ball. So, so imagine that goal at Wembley. All Ricky yeah. was doing was what he'd practiced all what his young was life. Weaving through yeah. the trees. I'll yeah. never forget that. So I was there myself that night. Sorry, you can you can you can show me Ryan Giggs all you like, but that is the best FA Cup yeah. goal. Ever. Amazing. Ever. Oh. Even better when you're there, though. Was, I'll tell you, it was special. I was, was five. It, yeah, and, I know. Uh, I know. I was, but it was just, <laughs> as I say, it was just special. We oh, three. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I come back soon. to the same. I come back to the same point. Ozzy's brain was phenomenal. If you can tell me that Sugar and Claude, his <laughs> hatchet man. Could understand Ozzy's football brain. They would listen. Well, particularly Sugar would listen to anyone else other than Ozzy. Yeah. Why do, why do <coughs> people employ employ great football people and then listen to someone else? Harry Harris had more influence on Sugar, uh, yeah, than Ozzy had. Blimey, scandalous! Just scandalous. Anyway, so um, what was what the story way... you told the other day about the coach when um, that Claude guy got you up into his office? Do you want to tell that story, Steve? Um, what was that? Just remind me. Um, when he called you up into his office and said, "What's that coach coach doing?" That he spotted another team's coach was in the car park. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he 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 was on the third floor or whatever. So I get a phone call. Claude wants you. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, your face says it all <laughs> i'm gonna get a bollock in for something but i don't care so uh he says what's that down there i said you 
You're pointing to the car park. It's the car park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's that? What's that? Without getting up off his seat, what's that doing in our car park? I said, I expect it's parked. <laughs> <laughs> but what is that particular many of us doing in our car park? So I then have to walk over to the window and it's Barnet FC. So I said, ah, oh. okay. So that's Barnet FC. I, I assume you can read. And, uh, <laughs> Barnet FC are led by Ray Clements. Not that you would know that because you don't know football. But um, he's manager of Barnet and they haven't been out of train for three weeks because of the weather. And he phoned me and asked me if they could train in our ball court. And I've checked it with the community. I've checked it with the youth. I've checked it with the reserves. I've checked it with everyone. And I've said they can train there. And who got paid for that then? Oh. Us. You're sort of trying to suggest that I've got paid for that. I've got to tell you, Claude, I don't need that sort of money. He said, well, whether you do or you're not, don't you will never let anyone train in our gymnasium again. That is my decision. It's great. <laughs> I just hope that you say no next time they ask. And I hope that Barnett have got a player that we want to sign. Mm, yeah. And I hope that they tell you the fuck off. <laughs> Just no class, yeah, classless. Yeah, that's a, such a lack of class. No it, give and take. There was yeah. no, it was all take, no give. No give. That was not the way. Do you think Bill Nick was soft on stuff? No. no. He was considered. He was considered mm -hmm. proper. You could say, say my, with regard to my one ticket for the cup final, you could say that was being tight. No. He had more people who deserved the ticket more than my mum or my dad or my brothers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was yeah. fair play he was doing. Yeah. It was fair play, and that might come across as tough. And I told the story, so I'm sort of saying <laughs> Chelsea, Tottenham. But yeah. That's the reason I signed for Bill Nick. Yeah. He was tough, but well, fair. Listen, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with being hard as long as you're fair. Absolutely. You, know? Absolutely. you can. You, if there's a difference between being hard for the sake of being hard, but being and and being yeah. hard for the sake of being fair, yeah. you know. Um, and I don't think anyone ever. I don't think anyone ever said of Bill Nicholson that he was unfair on anyone. Absolutely not. I've he, been tough on them, but it was yeah. tough. It was tough love. Yeah. I, I spoke to his daughter about this. I went to a game, got invited. I think it was when I was at the club for the 50th anniversary of my debut. And uh, uh, Bill's daughter was was on the, my table up in the boardroom. And, um, and we've discussed Bill Nicholson. And we both decided that she has his daughter and me as his young player. Favourite, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Don't tell Chief, Steve. <laughs> but neither of us wanted to let him down. So mm. Bill Nick had this aura about him that he did things so correctly, so right, that you did not want to let him down. Mm. What a good, what a great thing to say about a manager. And she told a story of her going to uh, with a group of girls on a minibus from her school, I assume from North London somewhere, uh, to Wimbledon and to watch the tennis. And they were told to be at a certain point at four o'clock because that's when the minibus is going to go. And her and a couple of friends got caught in a crowd. And therefore, by the time they got to the pickup point, the time had gone and the minibus had gone. Luckily, we had enough money between us to get on the train and get home. But, of course, we were late. And now they're at tea and she's describing to her mum that the minibus left. And the mum was saying, that's not right. They should have waited for you, whatever, and this, that, the other. And then Bill listened to this for about 10 minutes and said, right. <laughs> she was late. They were right to go. You deserve it. 
that's enough now. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, that, that's that's tough but fair. That's that's putting yeah. it out needed a big put. Boss it. Yeah, that finishes yeah. now. So yeah. um it was like you know, Bill Bill Nick talks about you know living down here so long he got in the soft soft southern way. <laughs> <laughs> Southern softy. Yeah. Good job I never met him as a northerner. I tell you. Steve, if you uh, if you had to man. pick pick one game to show someone what Steve Perryman was all about, which game would you pick to show him? Um, were you in the zone? As sportsmen famously describe it in that game. Uh... Sums sums you up as a player. Strong. Naive Steve again. First time I played at Leeds, Ooh. the the proper Leeds team. I get the ball after about ten minutes. It comes to me. I turn and Giles, Giles clips me. No, no big deal. I don't scream. I don't shout. Get the ball. Bump play. Off we go. About ten minutes later, I catch him. And there was no revenge involved. It wasn't nasty by any means. Because I didn't think... If I thought the first one was nasty, I would have gone 10 times harder. <laughs> the second one, right? Because that was part of what I did. I was... Yeah, I let people know. and uh, But it wasn't the case of that. I've ended up on the floor, and I've got six Leeds faces looking over me, calling me a little Cockney CU, whatever. And... Uh, you, we're going to fucking have you. Oh. Okay. So now it's game on. Me, Giles and Bremner kick shit out of each other. <laughs> we won 2-1 at Leeds. Martin Chivers, two goals. We went top of the league that day. And um, I, I didn't win the war for Bill Nick that day. But I won the battle. Yeah. I didn't step down. Again, naive. Philip Bill said to me, probably five or six years ago, Steve, do you know the day when you, Brenda, and Giles were kicking lumps off each other? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, he said, do you know what the rest of us were thinking? I said, no. We were thinking, oh, Steve, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Is that right? <laughs> you know what, Philip? I wondered where you all were. Uh, <laughs> when, the, when the sticks were over you, yeah. Where, where yeah. is everyone? Oh, dear. Yeah. yeah, you didn't think to tell me until now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, chaps, I've got to tell you, my battery's running out. So okay. it's just flashing up. I, I, I'll i be on again with you, no problem. But um, I'm, we're going to have to call a halt. Otherwise, unless we keep going until it eventually runs out then you'll have to say goodbye to me for can i i, I, I apologize I, I i know last time uh, the uh, a stream you did recently we uh, they spoke to you about a gentleman by the name of bob who's been in hospital with covid yes um, yes i was wondering if you would be all right to answer one question from him absolutely um absolutely. He wanted to know, he posted this a lot, uh, very, very early on. Um, and what he wanted to know was, would you, do you think you would have enjoyed playing with Gaza or would his unpredictability have got on your nerves? Is essentially what Bob wanted to know. I would have loved playing with Gaza. Gaza, uh, for me, uh, he had a joy of playing football. He played football like he was out in the street, he was in the playground he was a football crackpot i think um i didn't really know gaza i've seen him on occasions and he's been so respectful to me it's unbelievable and um genuine proper um i think gaza has lived 95 percent of his life correctly and five percent a bit sort of off yeah. the wall and the papers only want to deal with him the five percent yeah um they don't talk about the great stuff he does or has done and um i would have absolutely loved 
and I might have even been a um, bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, midfield enforcer for him. Yeah, I might have been a bodyguard for Gaza. Um, like I thought, I I thought that was my role with Glenn. You know yeah. what I mean? Someone yeah. kick Glenn or Ozzy. Um, mm, I'll go. <laughs> All right, they're loving it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but yep. um, I think I think Gaza, Gaza respected you if you were a serious football player, mm. and I respected him for the talent that he had, for the care, the love he showed for Tottenham Hotspur and its supporters. And um, I think, do you know what? I think I could have helped him. Definitely could. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Steve. And uh, hello, Bobby, to everyone out there. Yeah, hi, Bob. Hello, Bobby. Bobby. Uh, wish you every speedy recovery. Sorry for um, your COVID, but yeah. um, me and my wife had it um, very, very early on within it when it first happened. And... Um, we both decided in the end that we've had worse colds. Mm. But, um, so obviously it didn't touch us too deeply. Um, we've had all the all the stuff you need to have since then. And um, thankfully, uh, although our family have had various episodes with it, uh, nothing so serious as what other people have found it. So um, so good luck to you, Bob, and up the Spurs. Keep keep uh, keep the faith. Excellent. Um, thanks for your time tonight, Steve. Much appreciated. Um, we're blessed to have had you for so long as it was. So we uh, don't you don't need to apologise for leaving. We're, we're just blessed every minute and, you've given us. So, Steve, can I promise you one thing? I will never, when I contact you, if, if, if there are contact you in the future, I will never call you Stevie again. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Only his daughter that can call him Stevie. But, but we'll ask you. But we'll ask you harder questions next time. Yeah, people yeah. don't yeah. know until I tell them, do they? So you okay. don't. No. Know. Well, the thing is, why did you stick two fingers fingers up at us in the crowd? Because we used to go Stevie, 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 Ferryman. <laughs> okay. That's different. That's oh, okay. Yeah. I thought so, we, Matt, you, so I thought you've had your one warning now. You've had your one yeah. warning now, Alan. Yeah. Now you know it, it's Steve. Yeah. Don't do it again, Alan. So Stevie right. lends itself to the charm. Yeah. yeah. Steve it's good is for Steve, rhyming, Steve, isn't it? Steve, it's good for Steve, rhyming. Steve, 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 Steve Berryman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Stevies there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Um, thanks yeah. for your time, Steve, and uh, really hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for, the, thanks for coming on. Oh, brilliant. Thank you for coming and on. If, if you could just mention the book. I oh, mean, absolutely, yeah. yeah. The Spur Forever. I put my heart and soul into that book. You can turn a book around in six weeks. I took two years of serious talking. There it is. Like we've done, like we've done tonight. Serious talking, a lot of laughs, a lot of truths. And um I because I don't read books, there's so many photos in it, even stuff yeah. like my last the photos are great, yeah. The photos in it. My last uh, school report and stuff like that, all because of the brains of my oldest brother. And um Yes, it's it's a serious football Spurs book. Mm. The, the letter from, from Bill Nicholson. Well. The, the letter from Bill Nicholson's in there as well, isn't it, Steve? Yeah. You said. Wow, wow! Yeah. How good is that letter? Yeah. How good Don't is spoil it. Mine's on order. I'm still waiting for it. Don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your wall, is it? On my wall back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great to talk, chaps. Up yeah, the cheers, Steve. Steve. Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Come on, Steve. Cheers, Steve. Come on. Uh, see you soon. Come on, bye bye. Come on see you, Steve. Bye. 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 Wow. There we go. Yeah. Well, and so I'm in a doghouse. As, as if by magic, we've as got a, magic. A, a, a replacement of. We've got a replacement for Steve Spurs, Spurs ability. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's you. Oh. All right, fine. Wait, Wait, where's I, the one you got? You've got Brian. Where, where's Brian? You had Brian the other day. <laughs> I can't fit all my names onto the screen, boys. All right. Now that, <laughs> now that Steve's gone and Alan oh, stopped please. shifting himself, and he's had about four thousand cigarettes today, and uh, I'm oh. sure I've heard Alan apologise to Steve Perryman as well. No, four hundred yeah, times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, Steve. I didn't mean to, Steve. Please, Steve. Wait, Randy. Disappear. <laughs> Go back to a little hole. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Peace and quiet again. Peace and quiet yeah, has yeah. been restored. Yeah.
if you yeah. say his name three times, he comes back. I don't know which name you say three times. Come on, guys. We, we've been behaved, right? Now we need to cause some mayhem. I, this yes. Is not yes. We have. I, um, I was. I've I was serious this here. morning. I was serious on a stream this morning, and everyone thought there was something wrong with me. So, come on, let's just call, <laughs> let's cause some, man, let's cause some mayhem. Hey, Hey, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna disappear for ten minutes while you talk. Oh, you're dogs. going. Are you, is there toast incoming or something? Is there a little toast or a bit steak or something? Is there a? Is no, there I a need a cigarette. I need a cigarette. I need a cigarette. <laughs> is there a no, semi final on? <laughs> there might be a semi on. <laughs> 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 Leave me alone. Oh, <laughs> um, we should go through some of the, the uh, amazing comments that we've had tonight. Yes, guys. So thanks, um, apologies, uh, apologies we couldn't get to everyone. We, did, we didn't want to, I didn't want to um, interrupt Steve's train of thought by him yeah. uh, reading the comments and then, you know, when he's in the middle of a story, because I thought it was quite rude. So we have seen all the comments and uh, um, we'll pass, uh, pass them on to him. Yeah, absolutely. Cut, I'll cut and paste them. I'm sure he knows the love that he's got. Um, did you want to go through some of the comments, Rez? Yeah, um, they're the all, all very good, and really thank you to everyone who's sort of been in there. So we should we should really say hello yeah. to everyone. Yeah, so, to say hello chat. to everyone and thanks for watching. And yeah, so uh, for we have well, Eugene welcome. as always Eugene. First, first out of the traps with the yeah. comment. It's great to see him. Uh, Cody's been with us. Fantastic to have you. I'm sure um, Cody enjoyed it. Uh, Derek Hutchinson. Hi, Derek. In. Good to see you, Derek. And Mark Cousins, who we yep, uh, bumped yep. into a couple of us the other day. Okay, nice. Uh, on stream. Yeah. Uh, Danny's in the thing. Not do do do. The other Danny. Undo do do. Uh, un, the un, non do do do. Yes, yeah. undo do do. Yes. Um, <laughs> the Dagalissimo the has been. Never with heard us. of him. Never heard of him. Some, him some, some Canadian yeah, chap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we should, all, we ought to find out about this person. Actually, and see see how he came to support Spurs. Brian the Ghoul. Brian, De, who's Brian the Ghoul? Who the hell is Brian the Ghoul? I have some no guy idea. Guy with a beard. There's a good yeah. beard in the in the, in the got, picture. He's got there. a beard and, and he's got hair as well. There, isn't he? Yeah. Hair and a beard. I, I have no idea who. He is. Yeah. And glasses. This yeah, guy, obviously, everyone knows Bobby K. Bobby uh, K. Bobby K. He's not here. He's not here, Nick. He has to go to work. He's gone. He's gone. It's Bobby K. Yeah. But no, he's going to watch it, it back. Come on. Keep that's it in true. Your pants, that's Nick. true, actually. Yeah, keep yeah, it in your pants. Like he's going to yeah. work now. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Dove is with us. Dove. Aaron. You know who said Dove. I Dove, got it right it? this time. Yeah, yeah. My, um... uh, the, 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 the man, the legend, uh, Iggy Prince is with us. Iggy. Iggy Along Iggy. with oi, oi, the magnificent oi. trophy as well. His wife, Edge. Also with us. Yes, indeed. Uh, Colin from Talking Ball. Good to Colin. see you, buddy. Thank you for joining us. The cool is better, like Colin. Bobby the himself. Man, the man himself, Bobby. Yeah. Some who's this guy? I've no idea who that is. But um, I don't know either. I, yeah, some, no one knows. Some, He's, some podcast whore. Some yeah. Clown. Yeah. Some someone some who just clown. goes around round right, the houses. Look, LJ, you're walking on Monday, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Aaron Doyle, good to see you. Thank you for thank you for being with us. Uh, likewise, Dazza as well. Dazza, Dazza. Aaron. Yeah. Uh, who else have we had? Uh, we've had the, the legend dress. The legend, legend dress. dress. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, all the way from all the way from South Korea. Gagum has been with us. Great yeah. to see um, you. Alan will be pleased you're safe. He thought he'd, he'd written you off to some kind of typhoon or something, hadn't he? he was like <laughs> yes. wondering yesterday if Gagoon had been blown away by some extreme weather. But thankfully, thankfully, she, we can confirm that she hasn't. Alive. She hasn't. I wish Alan was blown off by some weather. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, TTG, I don't know if it's all of them, some of them, one of them. There we go. I think it's German, no? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there, but they are with us in spirit as well as in presence as well. <laughs> Kim Bloor has been Kim joining Blah. us. Kimbala, good talking to see about Kimbala. the wrong Danny. Debbie McGee. Yes, sorry, Danny I'll Mills. bring up. Yeah, oh shit, there we go. Spot on Johnny. There, you go. that's a much better comment to bring up. Sorry, Kim. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Johnny, spot on spot on. Johnny on the spot. Um, oh, and funnily enough, we've been in the comments as well. Um, who that else? You, is uh, Carl, that was me. Yes, uh, Carl Simpson has been with us. And uh, Nick will be very, very, very pleased to know that he can now sing because we also had do, 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 Danny Kiriaku, do, 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 
Danny Kiriakou. Yep. So Danny's I, I prefer Rez's um, sort of lounge version. That that do do. <laughs> do. Go on, come on, Danny Kiriakou. Oh. Okay. <laughs> do do do, Danny Kiriakou. Do do do, Danny Kiriakou. Like the, the eyebrow do, raises do. there. Yeah, it was it's proper proper lounge lizard. That has you like yeah. um, Carlo Ancelotti of the Danny Kiriakou <laughs> world area. Your eyebrows down. No, <laughs> um, we had Luca fourteen has joined us. Thank you for being with us, chat. It was really good to see you. Could um, could be a woman. I know a, I know a Luca female Luca. Yeah, but to be honest, I call I call everyone. I call everyone. Chap. A, a chap. Right, so, good old yeah. bean old chap. Yeah, and uh, and uh, TTG and Dermot has um, it confirmed Dermot. that it's just Dermot. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so Rhett. yeah, those are the people. That move. Yeah, right. well, he did. He did. He, yeah, Rex. <laughs> I prefer Rex. Actually, that's fine. Yeah, Rex is a fucking name, isn't it, actually. Rex. Rex. Rex, Rez, whatever, you know. Kim, we won't, Kim, Rez we won't is certainly saying, a dog. We will not be saying Dagel off. He's watching The Apprentice with his mum. Yes, That's yes, true. It's yes. Thursday, isn't it? Yeah. The last speaking Thursday of, before he goes back. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of dogs, next week on um, White Heart Memory Lane. <laughs> We've got. Who have we got? You Tommy tell us. Mitchell. Tommy, Tommy oh, Talks Joe, Bull. Just introducing you. Tommy, Tommy Talks Bull. He's on mm. next week. Yeah. Although Tom... he's not, at the, he's not at the ballet. He's not at the cinema. Nope. He's, he's nope. not out dogging. He's, uh, nope. he's here next week. He's uh... Tommy talks bones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I, I, he is expecting us to amend some of the questions. So I'll leave yeah, that. We, we wouldn't do anything. Mind. We wouldn't do anything that obvious. No. No. Certainly wouldn't. No. 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 no we're much it. more subtle. Much, much, much more much devious better. than that. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah. that away. Say his first message on the, on the group for Brian's leaving drinks: Are dogs yeah. allowed? Yeah. So, and I and I asked him, "Are you bringing a date, Tommy?" And then he I'm went sure on to like, his girlfriend like, would be yeah. <laughs> pleased to know that as well. Yeah. Girlfriend cheating <laughs> on him or whatever. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what to say with the, with the lad. All I, although I will say is that. Shelfside Spurs are cleared up two and two. I am on his on the on the cock from above. That's good, man. Sorry. You do well. It's good. Well, not no, really. I got, I I got one as well. That's three out of that's three of us. That's three sort of wins. Sure, so, if it's uh, dove from above, Aaron should be the man to win all these quizzes. Oh, here we go. Uh, so, so uh, Mrs. Mrs. Iggy has asked the question. Hold do on. You know who yeah. Yeah. Like? We'll, we'll get, we to, get, on. Home, we'll get go to that. We'll get to that. Go on, Sophie. Hit us go with on. it. In the meantime, I've got a new name as well. Apparently, it's Tyrannosaurus Res. Yeah, I like that. Rex. Rex. <laughs> I, I love, love that. that. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm going to change it now. In fact, <laughs> yeah. T Res, or are you going for the whole Tyrannosaurus? I don't know. Like, what do you reckon, T Res or Tyrannosaurus Res? T Res makes you sound like a, a rapper. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, really like it. Wait, Staff I'm Ross like... from the local kebab shop. <laughs> oh, 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 chili sauce, oh, dear. chili sauce. Hey, oh, uh, oh. you want some uh, chili sauce salad, boss? Sophie, <laughs> Sophie's going raw. Bloody hell, man! That's, just, that's, yeah. that's, that's throwing shade. That but is. to be I fair, Bobby is demanding it in the next the next comment. Like, he wants us to be Bobby, a bit yeah. more eth ethnically he diverse. Be so Shaniqua, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. Ethnic and also gender um, difference as well. If I'm, yeah. if I've read that one correctly, so that's good. I like it. Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're 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 inclusive here on Triple S. We are, yes. but I wouldn't say that we're PC. So it's you know no. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be sorry, is. Sophie. Don't be don't be sorry. You just don't expect Iggy to come home on Monday night when I kidnap him you know so Before, yeah. i wonder what you were going to say then so yeah, I, was wondering what you were gonna say. <laughs> I had to engage my brain before i came out with it before so i eviscerate him uh no i mean bring him home uh, iggy <laughs> sending out to bed without a suppy uh, suppy supper <laughs> i don't know what suppy is suppy's a little pet pet bear maybe i don't know before we carry on have to say hello to hb totsburg yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. So yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. great stories from Stevie there. Um, loads that I haven't heard before. So um, 
that's why I say I don't like to stop him when he's because his mind is so full of spare stories, isn't yeah. it? it? Each story leads him to another one. Then yeah, it's excellent to just uh, just listen to those stories. Yeah, could listen Nicky to had them like that as well. It was, they, yeah. they, they, they've got they've got so many of these wonderful. Stories. Can you imagine? Can you imagine any of our current crop ever doing that? Ever doing that? Being able to sit there and, and tell these stories? I just don't see it. I don't see the modern player ever having that kind of interaction with their fans. It's a, it really is heartbreaking because we break them, you know. It, so it'll, much. it'll only be after they retire that we see their personalities, won't it? The, yeah, maybe there'll be, there'll be some surprising ones. People we thought were really yeah. like, like like with Hugo in the lockdown, yeah. we, we didn't think he he spoke a lot, and he, and he was suddenly very vocal and very loud. And there'll be people that like that one. Hope, that anyway. Yeah, that's certainly the hope. I mean, I I just maybe I'm just really really sort of demoralized by current by modern football that I just don't see them doing it. I hope you're. I hope I'm wrong to be honest. I really do. Because uh, you know that's what fans thrive on being able to being able to have that interaction with with their heroes. You know. Before we go on to the to the modern players, can we take mm. one last moment to look at those stats on the ticker there. Um, mm. Just get to the beginning there. Quite impressive, isn't it? Um, it's going to take forever now. Look, I should, can I speed it up? So look, 1969 to 1986. 854 appearances, 39 goals. FA Youth Cup winner, FA Cup winner twice over. League Cup, two League Cups, two UEFA Cups. Footballer of the Year in 1982. And what, what I couldn't fit on my ticker, which I'll also give you a bit of bonus strategy of, I'm sure mo most of the um, watchers will know, uh, Steve also scored at least one goal in, in 17 consecutive seasons. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every 17 consecutive seasons, he scored at least one goal. And um, rather rather impressively as well, Res, he played every FA Cup tie for Tottenham between January 1970 and March 1986. 69, wow. 69 consecutive wow. games. That is amazing. Every, every Cup tie that we played in that time. That is absolutely amazing. Brilliant. And so, I, as as Iggy said, seriously, I've I've got mine on order. I'm still just waiting for it to arrive. It didn't arrive in time for me to read it before he came on. But yeah, go and buy it. It's only like twenty quid. Um, and Alan has said it's amazing. If that, Everyone, yeah. if that, yeah, you could probably get it less less on Amazon or something. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely go and buy Stevie's book because Stevie brilliantly, Steve, brilliantly put together yeah. the artwork and the photos. Yeah. If you want his email address, he will actually send it to you a little bit more but he'll send you a signed copy signed copy oh, yeah wow. i think it works okay. out about That's 24 pounds i think it's yeah, on 24 his website, 50 i think yeah. it is yeah yeah on his website you can you can you can order out oh, on i'll bring up I'll, what i can do is definitively put his website up there with me yeah, Has yeah, anyone said it, yeah. that al looks like rez's dad dad yeah <laughs> Yeah. Alan you McGrath, be, you remember that comment I was told to make when I first joined the WhatsApp group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it. How true was that? How true was it? Really, I'll tell you something, I didn't know how true that was. Yeah, but I'm, I may be a prick, but I'm your pricks. Or I'm a prick <laughs> you, like, I yeah. don't know where I'm going. I must admit, yeah. There you go. Shall, uh, shall I put a ticker up? With the website, yeah. So, so in the um, comment section now, um, uh, Rez has just put a link to his website, and uh, there's an email address on Steve's website where you can get a yep. signed copy if you want. And it's a brilliantly put together book, like the artwork and the the, the, the colours yeah. and it's 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 beautiful. I got yeah. it from my dad last Christmas, um, yeah. and Only... I wanted to keep I wanted to keep it to be honest. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was, uh... There's some parts of it there. So I, I would suggest if if you've got not brilliant eyesight. You really, you it helps Ooh. to have a magnifying glass and stuff to read some of the reports yeah. on the papers. We don't, on the papers. We don't want no, a technical review, Alan. <laughs> well, no, no, what's, what's, is... the, uh, what's the IS, ISBN number, please? Uh, <laughs> if, 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 if the dark, if the sun's going down a little bit and the, and the darkness is no, all going I'm, on the page, you want to turn on I a light? Because to to, uh... yeah, I've, I've got glasses. I had to actually get a magnifying glass to read some of the really. On some of the paper print, you they, absolute yeah, font pulled. snob. <laughs> yeah. You want a large, you want a larger sure. font, do you, Alan? In well, like, uh, to be uh, serious, still watching in future sorry, sorry, reprints. Sorry, can we have right. a larger be, font, font size? Yeah. To be serious though, Danny has Danny Kiriaku has got a serious question. 
<laughs> bloody hard work, Danny. Bloody hard work. I'm sending him home next week. <laughs> He's going to go and live with his mum. More, more, more importantly, more importantly, after 1991 Cup final, Rez. Sorry? You were born nine months after the 1991 FA Cup final, semi final. Yeah, actually. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, so I was I was, I was born in February ninety two. Your middle name Armitage Shanks. Oh my god! <laughs> it all makes sense now. It it's all, all makes to, sense. It's all coming together. Well, uh, Kim's also got a very valid question right, in the comments. Kim's also got a very valid yes. Kim question. Kim also has a very very in, important question for you, Al. <laughs> Can you read that no. or do you want your magnifying glass? Yeah, magnifying glass. I've, got a great love, I've got a great love of Jim, can you um, make sure you write in a larger font, please, for, for our future, <laughs> future posts? I was, I was drunk at the time, Kim. I was drunk at the yeah. time and I just spelt re Reg wrong. Yeah, it's Reg. true. I'm, I'm supposed to be called Reg. Yeah. And Reg fact, Reg 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 really. Heard. Yeah, I don't know if you heard, but Alan said he was he wasn't a great lover of Jurassic Park. He was just a great lover, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mainly during semi-finals. That's why Scott has not got to yeah. one in the recent times. That's yeah. actually the derivation of the term getting a semi on. <laughs> that famous uh, well Iranian well. name, yes. Reg. Reg. Right. T Armitage Shanks. T Armitage Rez. Shanks Rez. That's it. That's me. <laughs> Reggie. I, I, I'm going to launch a campaign to bring back Reg. My granddad's name is Reg. So if I ever have a son, I've already decided I'm going to call him Reg. Okay. Yeah. So I'm bringing back Reg single handedly. Nice. Reg is coming back. Little Reggie. You can go. His, his name is Reginald, but you can have yeah. little Reggie or like Reggie yeah. on or just yeah. Reg. You've got so many options there with that name. Reginald, Reggie, Reg. This is a question. Our oh, dog. Quite... When when oh fuck yeah, when when you when you refer to Sergio Regulon, yeah, do you call him? Do, do everyone? I'm asking sort of everyone. Do you call him Reggie or Reggie? I call him Reggie. Sometimes, sometimes a little from column A, sometimes a little from column B. Sometimes I go with Reggie. Sometimes I go yeah. with Reggie. You know, it depends. I always go with Reggie. It just trips off the tongue better than Reggie. Reggie just makes it seem like I'm halfway through describing a some weird sauce. Well, because my nephew is half Spanish, we do this thing, Reggion. When he's running down uh, the wing, so we do yeah. Reggion, like he's yeah, yeah. Um, Speedy Gonzalez running up and down that. Yeah, that wing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And we were trying to think of a nice little song from it based on Run Rabbit. It was like Run Reggie, Run Reggie, Run, 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 run. faster yeah. than a bullet from a something gun. We couldn't think of a word that would go in with just before gun. But it's, Sorry, it's not speeding. It's not a speeding yeah, gun. No, but honestly, <laughs> I've got to ask, please. <laughs> just read the message you sent on our group. <laughs> read it. Do I read it out loud? No. 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 no, 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 no. I don't know where my phone is. Where's my phone? Oh no! Where's, 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 where's my phone? Don't shine. Where's my phone? If you haven't got your phone, I'll read it out. Um, no, we talk about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for the, it's just, just, a, it's just really quick, I'm, not, please. I'm not going to read it or anything like that, but just for the audience because they might not understand. We have been torturing Al with this for weeks, right? <laughs> and it's been so much fun. However, <laughs> however he was the one lost that fans. mentioned it. So it's you true. don't want it's us true. to take the mic <laughs> Alan. I should not have mentioned. I know. And you should have mentioned one story, should you? And guess what? One person <laughs> has been regretting it ever bloody since. Well, <laughs> no, okay. No, come on. Let's, 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 let's be fair. Keep knocking them out of the park. <laughs> yeah. come Let, come let's on. be fair. Let's Sorry, Alan. Let's Sorry, Alan. Alan. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, and Bob, Bob, Bob is, Bob is telling us about his childhood. Um, um in, in his younger days, when he and his three brothers were cold, they used to make them <laughs> sit around a candle to save money. That's that's efficient, you know. But and, and then when it got really cold, he'd light the candle. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating insight into into the older days. This is the sort of stuff that Steve was talking about, you know, with 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 Bill Nicholson. You know. Anyway, I know I know why Alan told the story. Why? He wanted to enjoy his fame. That's true. I'm oh, just going to leave that there. 
Yeah, that's a bit naughty yeah. after yesterday. Yeah. That is a bit okay. naughty after yesterday. Naughty, naughty, very naughty. Well, look, mate, come on, we gotta have some fun, yeah. Yeah. To be yeah, fair, no, we're, we're... not on that person's, not on that person's. Um, I don't know, he might not be there, but. Triple no, I'm, I'm struggling with it. I, I am struggling with that, Bell. Honest, I am struggling with that. Yeah. I, feel like, you all know, I, feel like, you all know. I feel like Steve Perriman getting back from Bill Nick's office. I've got no idea what you're talking about here, and I feel really left out. What's That's fine. Don't on? worry. We'll move on. No, John, you do know. No, no I don't want you to move on. I don't John, want you to move on. You do on. know about it because I sent you the messages yesterday. You do. Oh, you, you, we need to move on, John. Mr. Direct, Mr. Director, <laughs> please <laughs> direct us elsewhere. I'm playing. Yeah. Are you ready? What? Yeah. <laughs> I do not want to have to come round there, LJ, with a weapon, all right? Either. <laughs> Just stop it. Look at that. Carlo he's up again. All right. Uh, Who's the one that told you? I'll you raise my eyebrow there. at you if you think so. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this Danny Kiriakou song. Yeah. Danny <laughs> I should do different styles, actually. You Can know, we have a Bollywood one? one? You do a Bollywood version, Res? I don't know if I could do a Bollywood one. I don't without... think it's culturally appropriate to do okay. Indian accents um, for this. For it would take practice anyway. Um, we'll, we'll have to ask Bobby K to do it then, because yes. that's fine. Yeah, right? actually, we could get Bobby K, Bobby Singh, and, yeah. and me together, because I'm Asian as well. Not necessarily from that part of Asia, but I'm Asian. Um, and then we could sort of we could like do like a um, a medley. Almost or a, a harmony. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. Do a, a harmony version. Um, right. I'm working Boys on the death metal men. version. If that helps, as well. I think the death metal okay. version would go down well. We get, get we get Johnny on guitar for that. Speaking <laughs> of which, uh, Rez, have you seen um, Metal Karen? You know, no. some guy has put metal music to ca you know the, the Karen TikToks where they're having meltdowns and shouting and stuff. Some oh, really. Like, I had these brilliant um, little videos it's called Metal Karen and then when they start screaming it's like the chorus and it's like, <laughs> like Cry! No pomegranates! I told you no pomegranates! And it's fucking brilliant because it, it work, he's, he's worked the music brilliantly so it comes out with the chorus and the chorus and it builds up. So if anyone wants to uh, yeah, Metal good. Karen if you go to YouTube and just put in Metal Karen there's, lo there's loads of them. Brilliant. I'll check yeah, that out. Um, do we want to talk about the game on Tuesday night, or briefly, we, no. we can. <laughs> briefly. don't ruin, don't ruin a good night, please. Yeah, uh, we came, we saw, we got beat. The I, as, as I said to Steve, I, I, Steve, sorry, I don't, he doesn't like oh, Steve. Dear, does LJ. Right? I did it as well, to be fair, yeah. earlier. So yeah, we've got. And I thought beat. I said to I said to you guys on the group in our first half. I thought we moved the ball quite nicely, but mm. unfortunately for us, the, the chances fell to. Doherty, who's obviously not a uh, renowned forward player, just put it, yeah. to put it politely. But yeah. um, you'd fancy him to take those chances, wouldn't you? Um, it, the form he's been in the last couple of games, he's cock a hoop so, somewhat, but just didn't take those chances. And I expected us to come out. We sent them out early, didn't he? They, they said on commentary yeah. that the players were out on the pitch already. So he obviously sent them out with some some messaging to, to get on the front foot to try and put them away early in the second half or or what happened was yeah. going to happen. Um, and for whatever reason, my brother said to me, apart from Dyer, he felt that no one looked like they gave a shit in that in that second half and extra time. They were just going through the motions. And yeah. as we said, it, just, it was just a matter of time. I was waiting until they scored, wasn't it? And like you said, Rez, it was just like, oh, there it is then. Yeah. Uh, we were just waiting for it to, to happen, weren't we? It would have, it, even, if it, even if it had gone to penalties, it would have been like that Norwich penalty shootout. It would have been a horrendous penalty shootout and we would have, it would have probably been worse. It would have been more embarrassing. I don't know. Uh, has he got? Has he got it in his locker, Danny? Has he got it in his locker? I don't want to jinx it by saying. Mm, will he get a good reception? Do you reckon? I think he will. Ellie, yeah, I reckon he will. I think it will. We we have a we have a tendency to forgive, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. We do have a tendency to forgive after a player's leg. It takes it takes Campbell like um, mm. actions to make us not forgive a player. You know, um, I think he will. I think you'll get a reception. Yeah, as long as it's not a reception where he bangs a hat trick or something stupid like that, you know. Do you know what? If he does, it will. I mean, it will just be inevitable. It will be. It will be unsurprising if he does. 
you know. Um, we in... didn't start the last game, did he? Or the last two games, I've, I've mm. had half an eye on it to see how he's playing, how he's doing. He didn't start, he was on the bench, so. And yeah. I don't think they've won, have they? So maybe he might get a start because they've not been doing very well. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's... Jesus Christ, Everton have only, are only, have only just scored against Boreham yeah, Wood. Yeah, against Boreham Wood, yeah. Oh, it's 2-0 yeah. now, now. Sorry. No, no. Big goal, Al. Now. Big Al, are you at the Everton game? Is that the one we're meeting you at? No, no Newcastle. I'm going to the Newcastle. Newcastle. Um, I, I did actually have a look into getting tickets, but I can't get anywhere for parking for, for the Everton. Yeah. I just and it, Ow, just, like, just, Ow, don't it's like with you, Red. If because you're not going, are you, Red? No, I'm not. No. Uh, sorry, this is to one other person that's him. <laughs> 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 um, no, I, I, I'd have to actually. <laughs> I'd have to. I'd have to set up a new like CRN number. And but I'd struggle because I'd have to go, I'd have to at least use crutches, you know what I mean? And I thought, Alan, you, were say, I thought you were going to say the font type was too small when you were trying to set up the ECRN. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I'd have to get up a new cell. The trouble with my the trouble with me is I'm actually in the mobility section, right? Yeah, the mobility section of the FIBO. so I cannot purchase a ticket anywhere else other than in their area. Gotcha, right? They won't let me try uh, if. If another person on a wheelchair couldn't go and he wanted me to have the ticket, I could do it. But if someone so who's had got to... a regular ticket, they can't yeah, transfer. I can't. It. No, cannot transfer right. it to me. So what you're right. saying is you you're encouraging our YouTube millions of viewers to go out there and let someone's <laughs> tires down or like so they can't go to the game so they yeah. can get a ticket. Yeah. It's, it's an appeal <laughs> for just one p a month. Alan can go to the Everton game yeah. if we yeah. if we disarm a wheelchair of a. Uh, do you know a wheelchair Alan. owner who goes to watch Tottenham Hotspur? Do you do you feel that Alan would benefit <laughs> watching that... the game instead? And slash their tires. Have you found his humorous stories about the 1991 semi final? There was a bit of a disadvantage. (laughs) One of the seats that was available was a bit too close. It's got to be be in that sort of really sort of sorrowful charity appeal. I couldn't do it. Sorrowful charity appeal type way. It's got to be Alan has not been to a football game. (laughs) In 14 since, years. Since 1991. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ten, pence <laughs> Ten pence a month could get us to hire a chav to let down the tyres on another disabled person's wheelchair. Please give generously. <laughs> Dan, Danny says, Alan, if you can't see the font, get your son Tyrannosaurus Res to do it for you. Yeah. No, the, 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 His yeah. arms might not be able to reach the keyboard yet. That's also true. That is also true. Yes. I, I find it difficult to smoke. Oh my God. Uh, Ow, look, I don't even I don't sit in my seat, so I don't you know, there's no worry about that if you're gonna be near me. Yeah. But getting oh, up to the fifth level, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, I'm all right. I'm all right. Piggyback I'm all right piggyback time. Let me use the lift. Let oh, they let you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, actually, no, Al, actually, I'll give you a plus one and I'll help you up so I can get up in the lifts rather than climbing up. No, I don't bed. want you at all, be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I might have to strangle you before I even got in the ground. Alan, <laughs> we, we, you said not to talk about the 91 cut semi cup final. Now you're going back to strangling again. I've told, I've told Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and look oh, what's going to happen. You just yeah. killed Alan. Yeah, you killed me. Just you very killed quickly, me. though, yeah. just, just just so you know, Danny, my 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 name has moved on since then. It's no longer Tyrone. Reg. No, no, no. It's not even Reg. I'm just going to take the banner down very quickly, if you don't mind, Johnny. Uh, very, very. Of course, quickly. far away. Uh, <laughs> it, it's now T Armitage Shanks Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and Reggie, so uh, get on with it. Put the right name up, please. <laughs> <laughs> and because of and because of Sophie, I bring all the chili sauce to the yard. So exactly, absolutely, yeah, yeah. We're going to call you just... Stab. Oh, no, I'll ask that question. I will ask that question when we get in the back room because I can't. We don't keep it. secrets at Shelfside Spurs, Alan. No, Reveal it Alan. now. Reveal it now. Well, yes. no, no, if you've got something to say, Alan, you'll say it in front of the damn class. Stop passing notes around. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what mate. What time's kickoff on Saturday? On Saturday, 
Um, that's a good question. On Saturday, is it two? Uh, we're at three o'clock. I think we're at three no. o'clock. Saturday. What time in Cox Oh, no, Foster's? we're not playing Oh, in Cox Foster's. 2.30, Chinese oh, dentist. 2.30. 2.30, yeah. 2 yeah. Sorry, so I was thinking game. Yeah, you going no, to no, watch no. Cock Foster's FC? No. Hard I'd faster. Like try, if, if I can try and get up there, I'd love to go and say goodbye to Brian just to make sure that I get to see him at least once while he's over just depends on now I feel on the day. Okay. No, that's cool. Two yeah. two thirty till four, he said, but I think it'll probably be longer than that. And and it's in a it's in a pub or something, and it, it's yeah. <laughs> the cock in. The cock in. No word of a lie. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give that one a miss, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rez, I think that the viewers are dying to know though, and um, what's what font size is the menu in at the pub for the food? Uh, the, the menu, I believe, is Helvetica 14. Point. 14, okay. Um, Al, but... you have to bring your magnifying glass unless you're looking for your dick to go for a wee. Yeah. wee. <laughs> <laughs> Al has no problems with that, okay? How I mean, you, how do you know? This, this guy is the Lothario of. The 1991. Oh, he's asked. I thank Steve for the show tonight. Yeah. And he's put, You're more than welcome, chaps. I enjoyed it very much. Regards, Stevie. Steve P. We Steve actually, P. It, was a, it was a joy having him. It really was yeah. fantastic. I mean, the same with Mickey Hazard as well. It's, yeah. it's wonderful yeah. hearing. So, this is why I want Kev to come back because he tells us these kinds of stories as well. Not obviously, he yeah. wasn't a player, but you know, it's it's thing, it's that sort of thing. Yeah, he's uh, I don't know what's happening with Kev at the moment. I spoke to him a couple of times via uh, Facebook. Oh, it's, it's, it's the infrastructure around where he lives, it's mm. so rotten. It just can't get any kind of sort of signal or anything out. He's gonna. He's not even watching right now. He told me he's gonna watch it tomorrow when he's got more stable yeah. um, internet. Yeah. I mean, what can he do? You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I sort of thought perhaps if we'd done a morning thing, he could come on and help with yeah. that. Depends. Yeah. I don't know if the internet comes in and out in Ireland or if it's it's tidal. Yeah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Who's this Danny? Who's this Danny? Don't this know who's Danny. This is not this is not do do do. We need to no, do 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 do, do come a little bit earlier, isn't it? <laughs> maybe maybe we need the song for Danny as well, just to differentiate. Oh yeah, yeah. Not do and, uh, not yeah. Danny Kiriaki. Do 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 not Danny It isn't Kiriaki. Do 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 it isn't Kiriaku. Do do yeah, that that's Gans. That's Gans. <laughs> we don't we don't know his surname, we've got nothing to work with. There's there a picture no. of um Lucas Moore. Lucas Moore, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Alan Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I borrow your magnifying glass out? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Dan, Danny's repping Alan Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a hardcore fan. Maybe we can put that, that, in the song. Put that into the song, can we? Do, do, yeah. Do, do. Danny loves Alan Hutton. Do, 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 do. Danny loves Alan Hutton. Danny, he loves. He loves Alan Hutton. Yeah. He loves. Alan he loves Alan Hutton. Oh, he's got his, yeah, he's got his uh, magnifying glass out. Oh, there we go. Hang on, Alan. Hang on, Alan. Oh, do you do you do it, Alan? It? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I think we're getting a little too raw now. All right. Harry, do you oh. really look like that? Now, come on, be honest, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see you now. Is that what you look like? <laughs> Alan, H uh, Alan Hutton, of course. Um, I would say I was going to say friends with Brian Daigle, but he met him once in the pub, didn't he? With him and. Um, who was it? Who was he with? There's two players. Was it Robbie Keane? I think it was Robbie yeah. Keane. And yeah. uh, Brian Daigle and uh, Alan Hutton had their little moment in the sun, didn't they, together? He oh. said uh, he said Alan Hutton was all right, didn't he? He said Robbie yeah. Keane was a bit drunk and, and annoying. <laughs> I might be paraphrasing you there, Brian, but uh, <laughs> Robbie Keane, if you're watching, we'd welcome you on any time. And we we'd, had uh, Brian Daigle, that was Brian Daigle's words, not ours. Yeah, yeah, drunk or otherwise, seriously. The, you know, the you opinions can... of Brian Daigle are not shared by Shelfside Spurs. No, that's right. That's correct. <laughs> Alan, I know. Stop apologising. I, <laughs> I know you love me. <laughs> Um, I'm just checking what, the WhatsApp all of a sudden. What are we? Um... Oh, no, no, no. This was a private message, Ray. Oh, <laughs> it's getting steamy. Yeah, steamy. What are we? Um, what are we thinking for Monday night? Then uh, score predictions, Res. What are you? Uh, are we going to bounce back, or are we? Yes, we're going to win again. 
Um, 2-0. 2-1. Goal scorers. 2-1. Goal scorers will be... Uh, will be Kane and Kane, I think. Two for Kane. Yeah. And they will be... And <laughs> it's inevitable. It'll be Delhi for them. Yeah. Oh, guarantee. Yeah. And for the viewing millions, how's your head wound? Are you fully recovered now? Yeah. Hitting it on the loft? Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. all here, all healed up nicely. Yeah. So you've even good. managed to shave it again without reopening the uh, the yes, scars indeed. of your your yes, lost indeed. youth. Yeah. Um, it's all, it's all, it's all nice. I think. Although I had a little speck of dust on my screen, and the position that my head in is, it sort of it was just on there. I was thinking, how did that come back? And then it's only when you lean forward and it moves. Like, oh, okay. So yeah. Um, Bazwa, what are you thinking for Monday night? <clears throat> I think we well, it's we're on the on the scale of win lose, we're due a win. So mm. uh, uh, based on the last four games, so we're going to win. Um, we're going to win. I think we're going to win one nil, and Kane is going to score, and it's going to be a bit nervy, and the crowd is going to get a bit restless. Let's just say. Um, yeah. There will uh, there will be a strange atmosphere at the the new White Hart Lane Stadium on Monday night, but we will all be there together, apart from Rez, who's washing oh, his hair. My, my, uh, my, my, brother, my brother's coming in my place, Iggy. Okay, Iggy's got my ticket, so just just treat him Marvelous. like you know I mean? So Iggy will go and see Stavros afterwards for a kebab. Um, and hopefully Stell doesn't get in a fight. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a few predictions here. Um, speaking of Iggy, Mrs. Iggy, although your um, contribution to the world is worth more than just being Iggy's wife, of course, Sophie. That's, I've just dug myself a, a hole there, haven't I? So, <laughs> Iggy is Mrs. Mr. Sophie. Uh, let's flip it. <laughs> Iggy is Mr. Sophie. That's his new name. Sophie is Mrs. Iggy. And yeah. Iggy is Mr. Sophie. We're all about quality, yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, we'll probably win 3 0, says Sophie. Um, can we have your goal scorers predictions there, Sophie, please? Scott M uh, has gone 3 1 Spurs with a hat trick for Lucas Mora. Um, <laughs> Coover's, gone, Coover's gone 5 zip. Kane hat trick, brace of Rabonis for Lurie from the halfway line. Definitely, oh, that's, what, that's got to happen. Put a bet on that. Actually, you'd get you'd get good. You would get really bad odds, but it's worth it. <laughs> what, what was he doing last night? That last minute when he came out, that terrifying moment, and then he fucked up the well against Leeds. Crossing, yeah. Against Leeds. yeah, that oh. was that was no, hard. no, no. Last, last night uh, against Middlesbrough when he came oh, out well, to the halfway well. line and then just about got to the ball and it hit him in the stomach rather than handball and then he oh, his last, his yeah, last minute oh, yeah, he hoofed yeah, it straight yeah. to the goalie right when we were trying to. Yeah, pass some pressure yeah. on you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Had a nosebleed. Um, Danny, well, not, Allen. not Kiriaku. Danny, Allen. Um, Alan Hutton. Danny has gone mm -hmm. Ducky two and Sunny. Danny, Danny Hutton. Which Danny, Danny Hutton. Yeah, yeah. Danny Hutton, the Hutmeister General, has gone for yeah. three nil. I think I don't know three nil. We, we, we haven't yeah, got yeah, Everton. Funny, so it must be confirmed. Um, yeah. so um, I guess we should call it a, a night as all a. An emotional low now after having Steve on. So mm. I said on our group earlier, it's, it's it's quite a big thing to have him on, isn't it? If you think the amount of time and effort we invest in the Tottenham and Steve's our all-time appearance holder, our most honoured, you know, player with trophies, yeah. um, and and some of those stats I said to you about not missing the game and yeah. the amount of time is with us and stuff. It's a big deal to and hope he does well, come back. Yeah, yeah. Um, honoured to have him on and to to, be, to share yeah. a bit of. Um, time in the universe with him, you know. We we shared the planet with him. He's the all-time Tottenham appearance holder, and we were lucky enough to share some time and some stories. And I'm glad I've done um, something. I'm glad I've done something useful. <laughs> well, I'm sure that the lady that you bumped into in 1991 would uh, <laughs> <laughs> also uh, agree that you did something useful then as well. No, not uh, really. The fact that we got divorced two years after. <laughs> Iggy Probably. sending you off to bed with a, a stern look in his eye. Mm. No, Carlo Ancelotti. Mr. Sophie. Mr. Sophie. Carlo Ancelotti uh, eyebrow. Yeah, Mr. Sophie <laughs> sending you off to bed. The missus gave you the look. She yeah. did. I saw uh, it. I did see it. Larice was bombing out of his goal, says Kiva. I'm telling you, right. fancies it. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm used to that look. I'm used to that look 24 7. 
is that why is that why you can't sleep mate i mean i'm just saying you know you can't sleep because he's always giving you the <laughs> It's, well, no, no, that that bit is the elbow, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I see the door creeping open there? Is it time for Mrs. Al's bed, isn't it? It's got been, to be you missed her. Yeah, oh, she's been in, in, yeah, yeah, in and yeah, out, she? Yeah, came in and out, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, Dan, I wasn't watching. Well, uh, she's had a weekly, you know, appearance. Cameo, <laughs> best supporting actress from an Alan uh, food <laughs> ringing. I'm a little confused by, though, is that she hasn't delivered you any food in this stream, Alan. No, I, I made cool. sure I had that before we kicked off today. Oh, ah, yeah. what did you have? Don't disrespect have, Stevie with toast. Oh, something new like toast with jam. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's true. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, no, the thing is, is that the delivery of toast has become a, a part, part of, the show, of yeah. the keystone of our show. And, and it, show it's everything. Everyone, well, of, no, listen, yeah, no I one tuned the, in. No one tuned in to watch Steve Perriman tonight. They came tuned in for this. <laughs> we didn't do, yeah, we didn't do our On This Day either. No, yeah. but it's all about the best supporting actress in a, uh, a comedic did. YouTube so, performance. To be honest, right, I, I thought delivering. I'd better make sure. I thought I'd better make sure I had my lunch early because... Mm -hmm. I didn't want to because my bowel food. movements are regular as anything two hours after I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, see you later, everybody. Let's, uh, let's, let's give it the old Stevie, Stevie music. wait for the end credits for the bonus material yeah. we should we should um tell the the viewers that that song uh was chosen by steve because when he had his heart um heart issues and came out of hospital that was the first song that he heard when he when he came out of hospital and he said it was very pertinent to the issues he'd just gone through and his life as a spurs fan what's it called alan the, the name of the song oh well, Stuart king um let me have a, i'm gonna have to look at it again because i can't remember What's he can't Stuart? remember. It's past, it's past 10 o'clock. He can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I love Harry, you. Harry, cut I it out. You so, no, it's something to do with the, with the heart, isn't it? Um, yeah. It was the first song he heard when he came out of hospital. Um, after, after his heart operation. Of his heart, heart operation. This old heart of mine. This old heart of mine. That's uh, it. Old heart of mine. Yeah. But that wasn't. Well, was not that was not that was a piano cover version of the aforementioned yeah. song. Um, so the FA Cup draw, Nick, who would we have got in the next round if we had... Chelsea. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, well, I've done that in there, doesn't it? <laughs> so it's uh, Middlesbrough versus you Chelsea. You can having to play them five oh, to so, four So it would have been at Tottenham. It would have been at yeah. Tottenham. Yeah. And your point being, John. <laughs> mm. yeah. Southampton, Man City, Palace, Everton, and... Yeah. Uh, Forest Huddersfield at home against Liverpool. Okay. Forest or Huddersfield. So yeah, so that's um, that's all set up for Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, and someone else. Southampton, Fairly. probably. 
what we need now. Oh, Alf, um, uh, what's it called? Everton, probably. What we need now is last orders at the bar. We need Mrs. Al to come in and say, that's it. That's it. Ring a little bell. Time to go to bed. Mrs. Al. Uh, last Al, orders at the bar, please. Al think, Al, think of the 91 Cup final. It's time for bed. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, no, you. Bell, please. We've got, a, 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 as I say, I, I don't want to upset my family. You know, that's I mean? fine. We're not upsetting your family. No, no. And on that, interested, note. No, no. on that note, on that note, Barry out, <laughs> Johnny out, Rex out. Yeah, uh, Alan out. Well, well done, Al. Again, bye bye. Well done, Alan, <laughs> Thank yeah, you very next, much. Rex. Next, next target, Al. Who are you on? Are you on to next? Well, I, did, on next... I did try for Graham Roberts. Uh, for April, he's, but unfortunately, he's said of, that yeah, his heart operation, yeah, so, he's isolating ahead of his operation, yeah. I mean, Mickey um, said he'd come back anytime, and Steve looks Mickey like he's coming back, yeah, yeah, welcome anytime. Yeah. We can do that, yeah. So, ladies, or Darren Anderson, it was his birthday, oh, yeah, today. yeah, he'd be good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to get, I'd love to get Ozzy on, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ozzy would be, be awesome. brilliant, or Ricky. Or both. Oh, yeah. Al, the two of them together. With, use the connections with uh, Steve and uh, see if we can get Ozzy on. Yeah. You might need to get Steve and on Iggy. at the same time. <laughs> we can't. Can we pick on Iggy? Iggy can get picked on on Monday night. Uh, if he's there on Saturday, we'll pick on him. In yeah. order for us to do that, Sophie, we would need some need incriminating him. evidence of like, embarrassing pictures of when he was younger with hair. I think is the yeah, one yeah, we need to like yeah. yeah. Iggy is a young, uh, dashing Italian. Yeah. Um, Do you want to see me with that? Yeah, said no. Which one's you? The one on the left? The one on the left. I'm on this one. I'm on this one. Where my finger is, yeah. Can you see? I've changed a lot. <laughs> Put it back up. You look like um, Tony Danza from the uh, 80s I was TV program. Uh, was it? What was he in? Tony Danza. Um, Taxi or something? Oh no! What's it called? Uh, who's the boss? Who's the boss? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So was that was that a fun experience to film? Who's the boss? It was. It was. It was fun. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, it was. It was different um, because it was a completely different time uh, that you know uh, during my life. Uh, I was American for a while. <laughs> Um, Did you get you to know, use your full array of Carlo and Charlotte eyebrows? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and even and in actual fact, Elton John wrote a song about um, about me, um, which was very nice. Um, have you heard it? No. No. Go oh, on, close it? Daniel to Tony Danza. Oh, oh Tony Danza. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was an interesting time. It was an interesting time. Iggy, Iggy, we're just turning you into glue now. Are we? Is that what we're saying? You were an Italian stallion, now you're just a pot of PA. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 21. My grand, my granddad's lost, started losing his hair at 21 as well. Mm. For, for an is Italian that, stallion. Joking, is that around the time when he met you? <laughs> yeah, the, the stress. <laughs> no, How can they a... hear us in the back room? Because we're not in the back room, we're still live. We're still live. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we went off ages ago. <laughs> Good job you didn't say something you shouldn't have done. Whoops. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, Iggy. Yeah, you are. I've got to go off my twisting. Hold on. I've got to, because I've got something being delivered. Me up, All right. I thought you were going to sing Foo Fighters. There. I've got another confession to make. <laughs> Al's no fool. <laughs> yeah. No, you see, you're, making, you're making a big mistake. You're making a huge mistake. You can take the piss out of our guests, but not out of our audience. Yeah. They well, Sophie agrees. Spot on. Spot on. No, no, no. no. But, but she's kind and generous. Yeah. Not all of our audience are. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Okay. Some of them. No, no. I won't say. (laughs) Some of them are probably getting incredibly. (laughs) Iggy, you're not. We love you. If we would you like to? Right. Before we um before we finish, would you like to tell us all about your channel? So like and subscribe to uh Res Rex. uh, So you can can find find me on 
you can find me on Shelfside Spurs show uh, on Thursday nights. Uh, we kick off usually around seven thirty, something a bit earlier. Um, and you know, we would really, yeah, really would appreciate a like and a subscribe. We had uh, Steve Perryman on recently, um, and Mickey Hazard as well. And yeah, we just we just sit there and we talk shit. And so yeah, like. again, again, you don't have to hit the button. Yeah, just a gentle click. Yeah, I'll even I'll, I'll even click by my microphone so you can hear the click for yourself. The gentle and, uh, caressing of the mouse button. Yeah. Left button, like res this. or the right button as you look at um, it. Let, 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 let the audience hear the click. Let's see if we can get that through. I don't know if that came oh, through. Yeah, yeah, that did. Yeah. yeah. That's it, sounded what like the click. A, it sounded like a cricket in summer. Yeah. You know, it's very pleasant, yeah. you know. Seriously, I if you, I, I if always, you want to hear a cricket in summer, you too just you click, click that button. like button. Smash yeah. that yeah. like. No, don't click smash that it. Like. No, don't it's smash it. Like. Smashing what, what does it do for you? Nothing. You just end up with a hurt fist. The only thing you know? smashing does for you is loses your career if you're Richard Absolutely. Keys. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Exactly. Nick, so, yeah. did you smash it? Did you smash it? Did you smash it? <laughs> What are we talking about here? That's Richard Keys. <laughs> when you was outside, did you smash it? Did you smash it? <laughs> I, I, I know you. Knowing you, you smashed it. You dirty you dog. Smashed it you smashed yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. You did. Didn't you? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say like I Nick, answered. It was banter. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Nothing but banter. It's all fine. Just banter. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Anyway. Um, where can people find you, Nick? Everywhere. Anyway. At, the, at the nearest kebab shop. Apart from nearest that. Kebab shop. You can find me. You can find me uh, at any local kebab shop. Um, mm -hmm. I have probably connections to all of them in the west to well the whole of London area. Um, you can find me whoring myself out on everyone's channel. Although uh, I feel that we. I don't know about the other three, but Tottenham uh, Tottenham away haven't invited us on. I can't think why. Um, we've been quite reciprocal in inviting them on, um, and we've not had the the option back. So, hmm. well, that's I not, feel a little bit free. Um, so, yes, if, if you're still here, uh, Mr. Sophie, the, that was aimed at you and Stel. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've, 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 I've been, I've been on world. before. So I've they're very world. selective about who they have on. No, well, well, obviously, I'm not so selective of you. So, obviously, uh, Tottenham Tantrum Gold, Persuasion, and Tottenham on tour don't give a shit about who they have on because they'll have me on. <laughs> it's, Nick, as I've said before, it's about standards. The truth is oh. never too far away from a joke. Oh, I Alan, see. where, I where, see Alan, where can going. people find you? Mm. At home. Uh, I'm having toast and cho oh, chocolate. <laughs> Where can people find you during the Newcastle game if they want to come and, and say hello to you and get get a signed copy of a certain DVD from the <laughs> past? <laughs> I hate you, Johnny. <laughs> You're welcome, By the way, ben, ben, ben has joined us. Good to see you, Ben. Oh, um, next time you swing that golf club, it goes in the wrong, wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo Ancelotti's out again. There's a right hole? <laughs> it's quite cool. difficult to do, isn't it? Can anyone else do that? Can't the Carlo. Can you do the, the Carlo? I can't, I, I, it's one it's at a time. The, 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 the Dwayne Rock Johnson. One. Maybe it's an Italian thing. The Biggie, left one, the left one. Can you usually you can do, do one, one eyebrow at a time. The other is harder, especially when you're looking at yourself doing it and trying to do the other one. <laughs> if I do that, it you can sort of do it. But the the right one, the left one is. Oh, there you go. It's um. It was like it when Carla thinks it's a really stupid question. It was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you're being serious? Um. Alan, before we go, um, what what book can we find you reading next? <laughs> I don't know. I ain't got one to buy yet. I've I've read me I've read me four books for the for for, for the next thirty. <laughs> the years. Life and Times of Alton <laughs> Thelwell. <laughs> 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 yeah. The autobiography. Yeah. The, the life the life and career of Alton Thelwell. <laughs> I think he should be our next target to try and get on. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> we need cult figures as well. We do, yeah. I've got not half just, a sniff just... at um, um, Stuart Nethercott. 
Um, uh, Monday Night yeah. Football, one of the guys said he knows Stuart Nethercott, so he's given him my number, so That's he could good. be our next, yeah. Um, yeah, be great. Our next, didn't, uh, didn't show our next you victim. We could, uh, we could get someone on because someone... Darren Anderton was going out of his, was married to his cousin or someone mm. his cousin knows, so yeah, we've, we've got a sniff at Darren Anderton, yeah, so... I'd like Carlo, Carlo, yeah. Carlo Ancelotti that. Mm. <laughs> so you better, whatever, whoever we're having on next, Alan, you have to read their book. And Al, yeah. Al, please can for Christmas, <laughs> Al, can you release can you release a book of Al's like Neil's or like a ready steady cook or something or something <laughs> like that? That would be good. That's merchandising. It's merchandising is we can we can generate funds for the channel with that. Yeah. You know? Iggy Cooking with Al. Yep. Iggy, yeah. a gentleman till the end. He is a gentleman, but just because mm -hmm. I said it. I think no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Where's the invite then, Nicky? Where's what, the invite? What he means is uh, you're all invited apart from Barry. <laughs> that, it that's depends. Fair. That's fair. That's Three fair. out of four. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Depends I how agree. Monday goes. Then it was still fighting everyone. <laughs> like behind the bike sheds, and he's arranged to meet someone behind the bike sheds for a fight or yeah, something, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Monday isn't. Isn't Tottenham away Mondays usually anyway? It is. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think there'll be a show on a Monday or this Monday. Iggy will probably... No. Do I need to come on? Come on where? No, Iggy's coming. Iggy's, Iggy's at the game, isn't he? He's got um, Rex's ticket. He's got my ticket, yeah. yeah. yeah but I didn't know whether yeah. he needs to come on some... He says, do it, send me the link. Iggy wants to well, come we're about on. To, we're about to finish up, but I can always send it to him. Um, send Iggy's going to gonna do the... We want to see the, the Carlo Ancelotti eyebrow in full effect, right. don't we? Yeah, we're Bear with me a second. And he's also, he's also waiting for me to finish his kebab. So uh, until he comes on and does his thing, I can't finish. I can't phone him and say, guys, finish his kebab, please. It's in the, it's in the link is there in the chat. If anyone else wants to come on. He just wants to do a Carlo Ancelotti eyebrow off of me. Yeah, there you go. I just forward it. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Here it comes. Cool. There you go, Iggy. You've hopefully, got it. hopefully Sophie's giving him the picture of a 21-year-old Iggy with her. He's going Actually, to yeah. well, have as well. As well. Can we have can Sophie we have, instead of? Can we have Sophie instead? Have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iggy, can you pass the? Uh, the, the, pass the link. Link. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we'll get them both on. Get both princes on. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. A prince yeah. among paupers. Yeah. Ah, yes. oh, I like it. Like it. Yeah. yeah. Princes again. Oh, two princes. <laughs> yeah. Well, who's it? Who's that song um, band that did the two princes? Yeah, and they yeah. thought they were grunge when they were just some. Yeah. Kind of they they actually on 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 their album, uh, on the same album. There he is. There he is. On the same album, there's a really good song called "Pocket Full of Kryptonite." Actually, the album. Uh, I know that one. Yeah, it's a good one. Here he is. The How legend. How are you? How are you? How are you? Yeah, good. good. Let me just say. Hey, is again. that is that Chelsea picture behind you? <laughs> yes, yes. It's uh, yeah. It's the Champions League. Uh, look, there's a Champions. <laughs> Oh. A, I promise you, it's a Champions League trophy. Okay, oh, yeah. Dear, I'm right. joking, I, I wanted to come on because I felt like a bit like Antonio Conte's Sky Italia interview is a, a bit lost in translation in what I was trying to say. Yeah, I I consider. I mean, I know I don't know you all personally. I know I've I've been on a stream with um with Johnny before and uh, Nick. We've not uh, other than on here and Rez. We definitely have done some before. You guys are very welcome to come. Uh, we always put um, a link uh, in the chat, as you guys know. So in, in the WhatsApp groups, and Brez could probably verify that. Um, we always put a link there. So any, any, you guys are friends. I consider you guys as friends, uh, especially in the Tottenham world friends. So for me, you guys are we're always welcome to come on anytime you wish to do so. We have a show Monday nights. If you guys are free, well, not this Monday, obviously, <laughs> we'll be, yeah, we're, we're, we are the lane, so we're going to be a little bit busy, all of us, trying to get the three points. But um, yeah, it's always, uh, it's always um, for me, it's never a problem to have anybody on, including you, yeah. Nick. Oh, Iggy, Iggy, you know I, what I, we're I, Monday, Monday nights, night. Monday nights are a bit quiet on the kebab, so we'll both be all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Monday night, that, 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 that's his busiest night because fish and chip shots are shut on a Monday. Aren't they? The, the boats don't go on a Sunday, so he, he coins it in on a Monday night. No, no one can well, have no, this, chip. LJ, this Monday, me and Iggy are going to be Stell's bodyguards. So if that guy does turn yeah. up, then he's going to absolutely shit himself because me and Iggy are going to be the side of Stell. Has he actually so, been threatened? Yeah. Yeah. Know, and, um... Oh, I thought I, I knew I knew that Stelz had been sort of been quite vocal recently, but I didn't realise that someone had actually threatened him. It, it was yeah. to do with the whole the whole. Um, I don't know. I haven't spoken to Stel for a couple of days, so I've not. I've been a bit busy and stuff like that, so I've not spoken to him. But um, this is news to me, man. I'll be honest with you, it's news to me. But I know that when you know. When he was opinionated as he is, clearly he is clearly yeah. is on, on Twitter and and he, listen, he, he called out the fan base. Listen, it's a massive fan base, Spurs, and uh, I, I, I listen. I, I, I'm sure he meant it with the best intentions. I'm sure yeah. he was upset, like most of us were, yeah. um, going out yeah. to Middlesbrough, um, yeah. and you know, and and obviously in defeat and in that moment, things can be said and done, but you know, uh, but that doesn't. That doesn't warrant in any way or form, if that no. is indeed the case, to Absolutely. be threatening anyone. But unfortunately, yeah, we, that's, we that's social media same, for you, man. We that's support Twitter. The same club, don't we? We all support the same yeah, club. But that, that, yeah, but that's Johnny, that is social media. That's what social media has become. And especially the Twitter world. Um, I try not to be too much on the Twitter world. I'd, be, I, I'd rather do this, what we're doing right now, all day, any day in the world. I'm a bit old school with things like that. Yeah. But. Um, but yeah, and um, I don't know what more to add to the subject. I know how 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 toxic we're all going to see each other on Monday. Just just let's we're going to see each Listen, other on Monday. Listen, I hope I hope Monday that we come out of there smiling, uh, having picked up three points because <laughs> it's not even worth bearing thinking about what any <laughs> yeah. other outcome um, could be. So yeah, if you want to go in, if you want to go in smiling, go to Mets Burger Van. Which Nick, you didn't get to have the last time. Go there, get a burger. Worth it, definitely worth it. It wow. was only technicalities that we can go there, Rex. Yeah, exactly. because um, it was um, Rex, down the rain, that is wasn't hilarious. It? Wasn't it, Nick? it was pissing down the rain last time. Me and Nick were there, so we, yeah. we didn't want to stand outside getting nah. getting wet. If it's, um, if it's clear, definitely go to Mets Burger Van and, and get 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 your burger there. He's a have, good man. Well. Have um. Anyone seen Conte's comments after the Middlesbrough game? Because obviously I turned it off straight away. I haven't seen anything. Yes, okay. What did he say about it? Was he what kind of a mood was he in? Iggy, have you seen any of the? Uh, no, listen. To be there? honest, with you, I, I feel that his post match and even the I felt his post match were calm, but I think he's been told after the Burnley game to turn it down. Yeah, uh, tone it down for sure. There's no ways, two ways about it. I think yeah. behind closed doors and in the change rooms, it would have been a complete different animal. Um, rightly so, because um, although he says, he says he doesn't talk to the players after a game, hmm. no, the <laughs> the um, I mean, if, if, not... he, if, he, if he does do that, maybe I mean, this might be wise if he does that because he doesn't want to either lift them too much after a win or bring them down too much after a loss. I can see him doing that, I don't know, I'm, I'm speculating, but. Do you know yeah. what he looked? I don't know how you guys felt, but he looked a bit dejected on the sidelines mm -hmm. even throughout the game. It wasn't even yeah. like, um, he, you know, as Absolutely. a coach and Johnny, Johnny could probably like he's 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 been there. He, I heard what you guys what you were saying earlier on with Steve Perryman about the coaching and, and the parents <laughs> and having to manage expectations of everybody, not just the players that you're dealing with, but the parents on the sidelines and stuff. I heard everything that you said, and um, it's a bit like. No, not that much different to what he has to do. He's managing all our expectations. So maybe you're right, Riz. Maybe he had to. I think inside he would have been. It would have been a volcano Same there. Yeah. But because that's just in him. But essentially, you're right. If he goes into gung ho, it could have a, a really bad effect. Yeah. But um, I, I, but I, I honestly believe after the Burnley game, although it was a, it, although he kind of confessed afterwards, a bit of a strategy, wasn't it? To um, to do what he did um, at Burnley, um, I don't know how 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 you know he, he might have been told to tone it down a little bit. Um, I'm 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 not too clear about that. It, it, it struck me as him then not listening to his messages again. Like he, he told him yeah. after the Burnley game, this is what you got to do. Listen yeah. to me, and we'll 
will win games. It looks like they completely ignored him again. He, that's why he had the arms crossed and yeah. like, oh, here they go. They're it's, not listening. Yeah, exactly. to him. Yeah. Yeah. I saw. I managed, I saw if, if I was managing people and I told them to do something and they and I told them repeatedly to do something and they don't do it, after a while it will it will stop being a case of listen, guys, I asked you to do this and you didn't. I asked you to do this over and over. Eventually, you just go fuck this for a game. Do you, know, do you know what, what Rez? You know, you know, particularly in the last four games, and and I uh, I was I I was in Mari's um, show last night. It was late, and and we was talking a little bit about this. What we're talking right now. And what I found in the last four games, you had the Man City, a game that we were nobody, hardly anyone expected us to get a result there. We go and win there, but we they allowed us to do what we wanted to do. And although we're a bogey team to them, they were so arrogant in their way of playing that yeah. they didn't bother rectifying any tactical um, yeah. changes to try and stop Harry Kane. They just let him do whatever they want he wanted to do, and it resulted fine for us. But then we go to play away to Burnley where they're kind of a low block and they're more organised and they, they 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 bring a more physicality to it. And we seem to struggle against that setup, which is Absolutely. a similar sort of setup, but with just a higher intensity when we play Middlesbrough because Leeds allowed us to do again what kind yeah. of Man City did. They allowed us to do it and when we picked them off, batter them. Then we go to Middlesbrough who kind of we're a bit more savvy. They're a bit more structured. They, they dealt with Kane because he had a couple of players following him. And all of a sudden, we was dealt with. We was absolutely dealt with. And the longer the game was going on, the more um, the physicality, the, 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 the intensity was dying off because we have been playing every three games and we just simply don't have the quality in the squad to rotate every three games to allow us... There is an element of that. There's, I've got a theory on this, though. And mm. I put it in the private chat. And this, Johnny, you need to tell me if I, if I can or can't. Can I talk about the hierarchy in yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Look, I sat down and, and I wrote, I wrote a, a long piece because what, what we see, and it's, and it's a fair analysis, you know, but I think there's more to it. The fair analysis is that when the players cross that line, onto the pitch mm. at that point what Enoch and Levy do is immaterial of course but I've of got course. a theory that is actually they are as responsible for what happens on the pitch when they cross that line as well and this puts me on that tiny little point in opposition to most other people they all think well once they're on the pitch they're on the pitch but the problem is this I'm, my interest in football is about narratives and relationships and stories rather than the actual stuff that happens on the pitch, although I, do, I enjoy watching that too, right? My view is this. We have built or we have a set of players who are working for an organisation that demonstrates to them that football is not important. And in the same way that any organisation has a culture and that culture influences their employees i genuinely believe that we have a group of players that are willing to get onto the pitch and do their job but that's all they are willing to do because they've got to the point now where they think well if my club doesn't give a shit about football i don't love it either but i'll do it because i'm being paid to do this job in the same way that a McDonald's employee, someone, a wage slave at McDonald's, is not going to sit there and go to the utmost extreme to make the best burger or to serve yeah. the, the fastest. The players that we have, <coughs> it's, not, it's not a lack of quality <coughs> per se, although that is an issue. I think it, the mentality that we've seen is caused by what I call the Daniel Levy effect, that he has basically saying you work for us and that's all you're doing there's no there's nothing beyond the corporate requirements of you going onto the pitch every few days playing 90 minutes according to this person this other employee that we've got and that's all your job is there's nothing there's no passion for football at yeah. Tottenham Hotspur yeah and that leads into the players in my view Sorry, can I just, I, I will come to you, Alan, very, very quickly. I just want to finish the point. Um, and I think what, what base, and the reason that I think that is that Daniel Levy's demonstrated that 
in with stuff like the stuff that he did with the non-playing staff, where he tried to put them on furlough, where he tried to cut their wages by 20%. He's basically saying that every aspect of this football club is, is uh, determined by the financial requirements and the corporate requirements. Therefore, no other priority is... It, nothing else is prioritised. And that, I think, bleeds into the players' attitudes. And so we get onto the pitch, have a shit game. Then Conte or whoever the manager is manages to up them a little bit by saying, look, you, you did badly, which no worker would like to do. They do one good performance and then it reverts back. And that's what I think is happening. Sorry, Alan. I, I yeah. spoke over you. Now, all I was going to say <laughs> onto that is mm. you would think you'd see a better performance when you consider that they've got pretty good bonuses. Mm. They receive bonuses. They get yeah. a straight, they get a set wage. Yeah, yeah. They get a bonus afterwards. I've got an answer to you, that as well. You would, yeah, but you would expect mm -hmm. them to want that bonus. I've got an answer yeah. to that. And that's yeah. also shown in other places when, again, yeah. compare, we've really got to, in this scenario, you've got to look at the football club and compare it to any other organization that isn't a football club. In those organizations, you also get people on yeah. bonuses. You yeah. know, you get people who have work-related bonuses and stuff like that. But that doesn't automatically lead to improved performance. Especially and, and this is this is when I when I worked in sales, I used to I worked for an organization and I used to get just commission for my work. And then they changed it and they started giving everyone a basic salary, but less commission, right? So they earned less from each sale, but they got a basic salary first. And the management on that, once they'd made that switch, they started asking, why, why is performance dropping? Because we had a massive dip in sales. Is because if you give someone a basic salary with bonuses on top, they don't really necessarily go after those bonuses only some of them will whereas if it's all performance related then they will perform and i think it's because i mean all footballers get a basic salary first and then the bonuses and it's been shown in other organizations that bonuses don't always lead to an uptick in performance as much as pure performance related payments do um, and i think that that's that's why we have it and that's why we've got it at Spurs and no other club. What what other club do you see them consistently, every, you know, almost every other game, stepping onto the pitch, playing lackluster like that? Somebody came out of a great point on Twitter today that, that the usual fan base was arguing to them. Uh, the Levy and was saying, oh, you lot are too privileged. Why should we be able to compete with Manchester City and Chelsea? And, and the guy just replied to him, because we pay like, more for our season tickets than them. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why shouldn't we be entitled to be on a par with them? We pay more money than them to watch our team and we're getting served chicken feed in return, aren't we, really? Uh, Absolutely. You know, this, is, this, is, this goes back to what we were saying and how, how were you, you're saying about the fan base and stuff like that. It's We have a choice at the end of every season for the following season, whether you wish to renew the, 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 the season ticket, whether you choose to pay the money, at what point do you say enough enough? And I'm I'm not trying to come across as um, as I'm trying to start some sort of war. And I, I completely agree with Rez saying in, in regards to the ownership. And Rez knows fully well we're probably very much in the same page in regards to how we, how I feel about our owners, which we won't won't go into too much now because it's just it's too late. And it's you guys have such a brilliant stream tonight that I don't want to end it on a on a on a. On a, but we know it's just it's clear to everyone how I feel about our owners and our CEO. But but once everything is said and done, you as a fan have a choice to make whether you wish to renew that season ticket. And whilst I understand that it's very hard to give it up because it's also very difficult to get it back once you have done so, yeah. and and you because the fan is always hoping in something changes and it's season after yeah. season. So that's how we get tricked, or those, or, or the season ticket holders that do that. That's how they get enticed to get not to give it up for that very reason. But at what point, Johnny, guy, and all of you guys, well, at what point do you say, for the reason you just stated, Johnny, and what Chelsea, and we pay the highest season ticket? At what point do you say, enough, man, enough? You lot are taking the liberties here. And also, regardless of what Red said earlier, I agree with what you what you've said, Red, in regards to. Um, the tone set 
or those above, essentially. That's what we're talking about. But the player that steps onto the field, away to Middlesbrough, mm. and whilst I could have my personal situation with the owners or even the managers, I, I believe it or not, a long time ago, I played football and I there were some managers I did not see eye to eye with. But I crossed that white line and I had a responsibility to those who yeah, yeah. families that have come down to watch yeah. us play football, um, yeah, yeah. team my teammates. So yeah. Tottenham Hotspur, the players, have a responsibility for those travelling fans that have gone not only once to uh-huh. Burnley, yeah, they, no, they I went agree. all the way back. And, and many and yeah. many of those people that yeah. we know travel to Burnley. Yes, um, absolutely. Mark, I'm not, from, uh, listen, I'm not I'm not just no, 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 no. I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not just saying, saying right that there's a responsibility from the yeah. players to yeah. put a performance in to but give you know the what? best accountability. To, you know so if what? you're gonna that, lose Reds, if you're gonna yeah. lose, lose standing no, listen, up. Don't lose standing down. No, no, I agree with you 100 percent Iggy. That's the way it should be. But do you know what it is? This is why I think it's so insidious. It's because Levy also doesn't give a fuck about the fans, and yeah. that bleeds into the playing squad as well. If he doesn't give a shit about the fans, they think that they shouldn't give a shit about the fans as well. That's the problem. He sets that culture. I'm not it's, saying it's, it's the common right. dom- the dominator is yeah. there. It, 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 all, yeah. all, 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 yeah. all roads lead to Rome. That's, lead that's, to, that, exactly. it, it's all it yeah. comes down to. Right. And this is the, and so, but but for me, this is the thing. And and for instance, when when the this is why I don't think that booing the players is. A, a, an effective thing for anyone who is unhappy with the hierarchy. I couldn't agree right with now. you more. Right? You yeah. Support us and you support your team. Mate, yeah. I've, what I've always said, uh, Reds, I've always said, yeah. let's rally around the boys. Let's rally around yeah. the gaffer because yeah. we need them. If we turn on them now, when the season's yeah. not even over, Absolutely. it's capitulation. Yeah. And what we need to do is actually, the thing is, is that when, I, I'm going to use booing as an example, but it's the whole way in which we support. When we boo, Levy can turn around and say, oh, they're booing the players. They're not booing me. They should turn right. around and face him. Yeah. We need to make any opposition. We've got to refrain. We've got to stop as We've got to show enough control and love for our club to say, you know what? It's not. Yes, they're at fault, but they're at fault because they have not been taught properly. Right. If someone doesn't do something right because they've not been told how to do it right, that's not really their fault. We've got to aim our ire at the right person and that is Levy right so rather than boo the players we should be chanting anti-Levy things in in the stadium right and when when we have a bad result we should I mean listen I don't think that Winks I don't think that Emerson I don't think that Doherty I don't think that you know at the left Ben Davis is good enough for our club we need better players I agree when we spend time on Twitter, on social media, on these things, saying Winks is shit, Emerson is shit, this player is shit, that they start to shit. believe it. We are. They start to believe it. Yeah, we're not focusing on the main problem. Of course, of course. And he loves that. He loves all this talk about this player is shit and that player is because it deflects attention from him. You know, I, I don't want to. See Emerson, I don't want to see Emerson pull on the Spurs shirt again. He's going to because he has to. But he, it's not his fault that he's been hired by the club. Right, that's Levy's fault. So because he's there, I I need to criticize Levy, mm-hmm. not Emerson. You know. Do you know? So, do you know? Do you know when when someone uh, when a player that I, I don't rate, and we've all been there, we've always looked at as wearing a shirt and simply. I've never. This is now the same when I was seventeen, eighteen years old. When I used to be at that age, and I used to watch. If I hated that player so much. I just simply wouldn't say anything whilst he's playing. Whilst he's playing, I'll let him get on. I wouldn't boo him. I wouldn't cheer. I just watch, just play. And then once the seasons, or once you know, once all is said and done, once our targets have either either been achieved or missed, which can happen, and you know that the, the end of the season they're approaching, that's the time where what there aren't they will make those evaluations. I trust in Conte mm. to make those evaluations and make the yeah. right decision. This is what Johnny was saying earlier. We're saying, you know, we know better than Conte. Maybe it's, he's not perfect. I'm not saying that he, he's not accountable yeah. for anything. But surely, in the course of a season, he will make evaluations within the season. Who is right for him and who isn't? And that's where you need to put the trust. But then what we have to make sure is that those who are meant to be backing the manager, exactly. which he's been brought in for, Get put in. Yeah, absolutely, and that—that's 
And that's that's all we can ask for. We we as fans, our only job is to support the team. Yeah. Because I don't it, care if um, that guy I don't like him or, or hate him or whatever. If he's wearing my shirt and he's wearing his badge on, on I have to I have to for that 90 minutes at least, mm. he's one of them, he's me. He's me out there. He's representing me out there. That's that's the that's the job of, of, of the fan. And that's the responsibility that I go back to saying that a player needs to feel with the fans, these guys that are travelling all over the country to come and support you, if at some point you have to, some Steve Perryman was absolute testament of it tonight. He looks at it and he's like, these guys are coming to watch me. I've got a responsibility to them to like, bleed, bleed yeah. shirt. And I know like, whilst I know he's old school and it's, it's a time, it's a different time, as you rightly said earlier, it's a different time where the fans and, and the players were more approachable, where they were more, they're not in the social bubble and all that stuff. I get all of that and things have moved on from there. But I think the values have to remain the same because that should be the responsibility of a footballer knowing fully well that if he's joining a team, he's fully embracing everything that comes yeah. with it, the responsibilities but, that come with it. But he, I, again, and I'm but and yes, I'm not but yes, I know the common dominator. It, it, yeah. it has to start from the top, coming down. When you're that. affected like that, when when you have that effect, it's hard to to sort of drag yourself out, especially if you've got a big group all doing it. You know, again, that's why I think in terms of relationships and organisations and and cultures when it comes to football, you look at look at Liverpool, right? Yeah. Look at Liverpool. They've got great players. No <clears> denying. <throat> But when they play together, they, 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 you can see it. They, they feel football. Yeah. I don't see that enough in our players. And again, I'm not saying they shouldn't feel that. They should. And it is it really, it is their responsibility as men, as adults, to do that. But they are under this umbrella that tells them that football isn't important, just their salary is. And so, Rightly or wrongly, it leads to that attitude. And that attitude won't change. And this is why, look, if you look at it, who are our better players? Who are our more energetic players right now? Benton Kerr, Kulisevsky, yeah. Romero, the ones that are latest. They've just literally game. arrived, yeah. Yeah. Who are the ones that are most likely to sort of disappear? Winks, Kane, Sun, yeah. yeah? Those that have been there the longest, Yeah. It's that the longer they stay under Levy's influence, the less likely. They, and this is why I think that things won't change unless he's gone, right? Because Kulisevsky, Benton Kerr, Romero, they'll start suffering it too. And we'll just, again, it will just gradually drip down and, and get back down to that level. We'll bring more players in and the new players will be better in terms of their energy and their commitment, but then they'll sink down as well. And we'll just keep going through this cycle. It's until but, he's gone, nothing's going to change. But the, the thing is, I don't think we're we're we're. Uh, I don't, and I think there's still many. Uh, listen, I've ne I've I read the messages that are on Twitter, and I'm not saying that the whole um, fan base is pure. Not every Spurs fan is on Twitter. Let's just say that for now. Yeah. But what I do read, and what it is, just a, a very uh, divided fan base, which which is what Spurs fan base is. Yeah. And it's a very defined. I don't think I'm saying anything that's out there that that we don't already know. Um, it's a divided, and those that are still in favour of the Levians, if you like, or the Inikins, they say, you know, you've only got to look at us before this um, ownership took over 21 years ago, yeah. and we was in the mid 90s. We was no different. We was always around that. This is Tottenham's mm -hmm. level, if you like. You know, we was yeah. finishing sixth, seventh, and eighth, even in in the 90s. Why make and look how much progress there's been? Yes, although the team haven't progressed, they're still finishing more or less. Apart from the Pochettino bracket, where we was finishing fourth, we're still there. We haven't got any. We're not struggling for relegation, but yet we've done so many things off the field. But listen, look, I don't care what happens off the field, man. My, I'm, 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 it's for me. It's about the football. For me, it's yeah. about what's what's on the pitch. You know. You, it's wonderful what you've done. I'm not discrediting him from what he's done and, and the levels he's, he's lifted up the whole stadium, you know, the stadium and the, and the, and the, the training ground, which I've, I've personally been in there before. And it's amazing. But then it's like, at what point do you start saying to yourself, right, we really need to start putting some sort of investment 
into the team to bring it up. I'm not saying no one... No one at Spurs has ever said we, we need to win the league every year. No one has ever said that. No, it's no fans expecting that. But can we at least have a similar journey to what Leicester have had? We won't. Where every so often they get they bring a trophy and or they have they they they're, they're a club at least that are going places. I think all of those, I think that, all that's of those a reasonable things. expectation. I think as a, as a fan, Iggy, of course, it's more than reasonable, much more than reasonable. Iggy. I just don't see it happening. And that's a sad, that's a sad reality. Not in terms of leaving, not necessarily investing. I reckon there's a chance that he will spend some money in the summer, mm. but it's not going to, for me, I don't believe it's going to change anything. The only thing that's mm. going to change Spurs' trajectory, in my view, is that, <laughs> that one is no longer involved in anything to do with football with that club. At what are all. the probabilities of it happening now? Exactly. Exactly. So and that's we know we already know Joe Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis's hair yeah. hair is his daughter, isn't it? Yeah. And and listen, yeah. and, and I don't imagine her she to be. She likes She likes she, football. She likes football. She likes football. Maybe. No, she does apparently. No. So, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, uh, Alan. I'm gonna have to hold reservation on that one, mate. I, 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 yeah. I don't know what to say. I hope you are right wholeheartedly. Let's. I hope um, you're right. Let's look on the positive side. I'm sure last, well, yeah. two weeks ago, Chelsea fans didn't think Roma yeah. Abramovich was going to leave, leave yeah, their club. Really. Exactly, so yeah. you never know what tomorrow brings. Hopefully, yeah. something might happen and Levy decides he's got he's got to go. He's got no choice but to sell. You never know. That's but look, I want to. I want to. I do want to suffer a non-fatal but absolutely hilarious injury that basically prevents him from being able to do anything to do with football, like a like a a sudden allergy. That would be the best. Grass. Uh, allergy uh, with grass. That's and the, can go, he can't go anywhere near paper, Hotspur. Paper, 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 as, paper. As, as, yeah. as, as much, as much, I know, I know what you're saying, Riz, but as much, <laughs> I, I don't want everyone to go down that route. But look, guys, I don't want, I know you guys were knocking off before um, I came on. And I just want to say, listen, it was a really brilliant stream tonight and I really, really enjoyed it. I listened to it attentively, not just what Steve, Perryman said, but what you guys were saying as well, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Oh, I thoroughly okay. enjoyed it. I really, really, yeah, really enjoyed it. And, and do you know what? I'm glad I what, gave a you the what, what a man. man. What a man yeah. he is. It's not just the captain, a football legend, who, who, by the way, I did put this in a question early on, I can't believe that he only played once for England. Someone yeah. will have yeah. to explain to me, and maybe another time, and another show, maybe Alan yeah. will probably know a little bit more, as to why this, this no. man... Man, I say man, not player, a legend, captain, man, only represented his country one time at senior level. But yeah. listen, he's an absolute legend and the absolutely. values that he still holds to this day, the way he spoke about Bill Nicholson, the way he spoke about Alan Sugar, this is a real, this, a real, real guy with real Spurs values, which over the years, unfortunately, given because generations have moved on, but the values should still remain the same at a club. And maybe Steve Perryman should have a little bit more involvement on that front mm. to keep those team football values within the club. Absolutely, Iggy. That's why I've been making a night of all the little sands and um, the amazing of the club that he comes up with. I'm keeping a list of them also. So it's I can't all remember, you know, just yeah. honestly, I can't fantastic. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think you, we all echo that. And um, thanks, uh, Steve, for his time. It's been the most enjoyable show. Um, we need to give it knock it on the head now. It's nearly eleven o'clock, isn't it? We've been going for three hours and twenty yeah, minutes, was... so we're all we're all streamed out. I think everyone. Yeah. Off, <laughs> after I've the, been uh, saving myself. I've not been on any streams this week in preparation. You've been, for you've been this saving one, yourself, though. have you? Yeah. Um, Iggy, do you want to plug your channel before we before we jump off? Right. First of all, like to public say that all of you are welcome to come. <laughs> I can't believe you. I need to send invitations out to have you on our mm. show. You guys should know me a little bit better than that, but I, I did say. <laughs> I I took it to note. I noted it, and now I will. I will publicly say it. You guys are welcome to come. We put. We always put a stream link on on on, on below the channel or, or, or in the WhatsApp. Uh, I don't know if you guys are on it. If you're not, let me know, and I'll, and I'll add you. I'll add you on there, guys. Okay. So, um, Res 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 knows he's, he's in there. So I will, we always put the the link to come on the show for whoever is, is free to do so. Obviously, Monday night, we're not going to be able to be on because we will be, well, I will be, thanks to Rez, I will be at the game. Yeah. And I would look forward to meeting Nick. And uh, if you, any of you guys are there, I would look forward to uh, meeting you in person. 
Um, but after which, yeah, we 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 we'd normally do Monday night. We'll do a Tuesday night with the with the boys from across the pond. Um, we'll probably be oh, well, yeah. for sure. We'll be discussing what would hopefully be an Ever uh, an Everton loss and a Spurs mm. win. Not forgetting and, your, um, no, and not then, yeah, forgetting and your then, daily dips as well. Your little daily dips. Yeah, every morning. yeah, yeah the yeah. daily Fantastic. dips are always there. I did one today. It was a bit different. I thought, you know what? We got four or five days before the next game starts. I thought, let me do something different. I just. Just, I wanted to explain to people because it comes out, you know, how can you be a Spurs fan? You're AC Milan. What are you? You Spurs, you AC. And I'm, no. I, I try to explain the differences of having, I felt I'm fortunate enough to have two backgrounds. You know, whilst I, 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 I grew up my life in, in England, um, I came over from Italy. And obviously, I have a massive Italian family that live here. So my connections are, you know, I have both backgrounds. And many people um, <laughs> that I know that have that background have a team from back yeah. home. Yeah. And have one obviously that I developed when when I when I moved to England. So that's why there is such affiliation. Also with the, the Chelsea links, I apologise if I have any Chelsea links with my canvas behind me. But um, <laughs> guys, honestly, it's um, that's that's why I tried to do something different today. But yeah, tomorrow we'll be back to talking about um, more closer to home stuff, and this hopefully builds up to a nice end of the weekend. And we're gonna, it's a long old wait, isn't it? We're looking for it. All yeah, the teams to play I mean, before we get but, to ours. But we can't ruin our There's weekend. No yeah. possibility of Everton ruining our weekend. Or oh, sorry, Spurs ruining no, our weekend. No, no, that's <laughs> all right. Only they're Arsenal. Just, they just they potentially win. might ruin the rest of the week for us. But yeah, exactly. No, but listen, I'm, I'm always, always positive that I think Conte is going to normally when he has the team together for a week um, or five or more than three days. Uh, they prepare the match well, and I'm pretty positive. In front of our home fans, being that we haven't seen the team for a while now at home, um, yeah. it's, it's nice that we turn up. And, and let's hope that we don't get the Deli Alley turning into prime, prime Zinedine Zidane. Prime, you know? prime Deli Alley. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I look forward to it, and I'm Excellent. always positive that we will, we will get the result that we require. I'm not going to do any predictions, but. Right. I think we'll get over the line on this Let's one. Let's end with a come on you spares. Come on you spares. Always come on you spares. Always. Come on you spares.